sets your butane torches to high and your expectations to low. Coming to you from the cigar cave in the hills of the Steel City, get ready to get your fix. This is the Cigar Junkies Podcast. Welcome to the Cigar Junkies Podcast. The cigar show for the community by the community. A forum that talks stogies, booze, food, and anything else in the cigar lifestyle. If you're looking for ratings, negativity, or an authority on all things cigars, you came to the wrong place. Whether you like what you hear or not, please join the conversation and let us know by finding us at the Cigar Junkies Facebook group or contacting us at thecigarjunkies at gmail.com. What's, What's up, junkies? junkies? Yeah. That'll get it going, buddy. Feel better? It'll get it going. Feel better? Hey, dude, your face. We needed a push. It went red like this. Like, I watched it rise. It was pretty fantastic. I do it for the people. I do it for the junkies, I did it for the peoples. We needed something. We needed the push. Ryan already had it. He said he set his butane to a high and lost an eyebrow. There you go. (laughs) We told you we are not an authority. You should not be listening to Fuck that shit. Listen to us. What are they going to do? Sue us? I got no money. You got any money? No. Yeah, we're good. Fuck that shit. I mean... If you'd like to take some of my negative debt, or negative debt, I guess that would be positive. That's negative. If you'd like to take some debt. I think I'm negative debt's a double negative. Yeah. I mean, definitely not. I think two Correct. negatives make a positive, though, so we're good. Perfect. If that's the case, I should be... Pitter-patter. Let's yeah, I don't know, dude. Fucking, I hit the music, and I was like, we need something. We need something. I'm going. So we'll see. We'll see how we, uh, how we pace this shit. Maybe I can just ride it steady. And not do the big decline. Yeah, those are always fun. The good thing is I don't have a two foot high beer to chug yes. halfway through the episode, yes. so that that's usually Wham, helpful. And he's done. And you, when you're drinking booze all the time, like fucking liquor, you don't think the beer's gonna do you in. But when yeah. you drink one of them fucking big ass glasses, Dude, we did like five. It? We had like five beers that night too. That wasn't. I don't the, that wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember was, the number. It wasn't yeah. counting. It, I have no idea what the actual number was, but we had more than a couple. Like I. I refilled the pitcher halfway through the show. Yeah. Yeah, the number of times that I go for a beverage and Sam just looks up over at me and goes, no. No, please don't. I'm like, challenge accepted. Please don't. (laughs) Not this time. And it's on. Uh, Yeah. Hey, man. Like I said, you got to do what you got to do to get shit fucking moving. My blood is flowing. I'm pumping. Ready to roll now. fucking ready. Yeah. I digs it. Yeah, all that... uh, that anxious energy I had from the fucking intern hopping in the shitter five minutes before we needed to get going is all coming off. Feel better. I do. So how was your week? Was it, did it pay attribute to this issue that we were just discussing or? Nah, it was, it was, an, it was not an exciting week, but it kind of sucks, thing. man. I've been on back turns for fucking oh. like six weeks or some shit. Yeah. If you don't know what that means, it means I have not worked daylight. Yes. I'm used I haven't to seen the sun. A rotation. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, here's the thing. It's really weird. Like, especially the midnight shifts, which are the ones that I'm not accustomed to doing. It's got this weird good and bad energy. Because I wake up at, like, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I don't have to be at work until 10.30. No. So I got all kinds of time. And usually I fucking kill it. Like, I wake up and I come down here and have a drink and smoke it. Like, a, a non-alcoholic yeah. drink. Get some caffeine in me, smoke a cigar, and then go, oh, I just wasted an hour and a half. Yep. And then I'm like, I go, all right, I guess the wife's going to be mad at me if I don't clean something up. So I'll go, like, make the bed and do the dishes. And then I'll be like, now what am I going to do? Usually I end up back down here, tidying some around. shit yeah. up. I'm like, I should play some video games. No, but then it happens. I eat dinner, watch some TV, and then I'm like, fuck, I got to go to work? And I'm tired because I've been up for eight hours. Yep. <laughs> but there, the positive to midnight shift is... It's. I feel like everybody just does their job and just kind of rolls through. Like there's no. It's it's even with a good crew that you don't normally have to manage, you can be even more hands off with. Like here you go, guys, and just stand there and you know they rock and roll. Honestly, that's part of the problem because it's too smooth, it's too easy. Nobody bothers you from a managerial standpoint. Like it is hands off, and you think that would be good. Mm-mm. That would be okay. If you're like, okay, man, it's been a little rough. I need a little break. It'd be nice to yeah. just chill. But whenever you don't feel compelled yeah. to have to run around and do shit, then you're just sitting there going like, man, this night's dragging. It makes it tough. Hmm? That's I did uh, when we had a couple of our outages. I was the back half guy. And back half's for <laughs> You're us. always the back half yeah. guy, aren't you? But, the, but being the back half guy, you you know, you got to be there. Your crew's there 12 hours. So you got to be there an hour before them. And then you got handoff at the end. So you're there minimum 14. Usually ends up being 16 hours you're there. 
So that sucks to begin with. And then it, you know, you're busy as hell for the first hour. And then you get the guys kicked off and everything. And then what? Like now you d- they're just doing their job. Like if they have a problem, then I got something to do, but I'm just there to answer like to fix problems. Yeah. If there's no problems, there's nothing to do. Right. It's like, okay, what's next here? Okay. Well, I, I did my job for that. And like you said, it sounds great, but it makes the nights so long. It can be a nice break when <laughs> shit's been fucking crazy. Yeah. Right. And, and here's the thing. If you think about it and go, Oh, that's like really easy. Well, it, from the perspective of trying to fit everything together, if when things are going good, you're not bored out of your mind, then when things are going bad, you're screwed. you're gonna be really fucked because yeah. there has to be time in there for for dealing with problems. Right. So like the guys that'll be like, oh, you just sitting there with your fucking feet kicked up on the desk. It's like, yeah, like until you know, shit hits the fan, right. and then I gotta be on the spot. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So and then like. So fucking Jason though is, is starting to learn, but he's still with Craig, uh, our coworker, who is older than both of us by a considerable margin, but he pounds five hour energies and Mountain Dew all night at work. Oh and he's naturally jittery, jittery by yeah. nature. Everybody always thinks he's nervous. He's not nervous, it's just his personality. Just how he moves. But he's fucking just constantly gotta be moving. He's fucking always worried about shit going perfect and he's on top. <laughs> You know. Oh yeah, you'll be you'll be talking to him, and then right in the middle of the story, or or whatever you're saying to him, he'll cut you off. Let's go for a walk. And if, if <laughs> sometimes it won't even be let's go for a walk, he'll just fucking stand up and walk out of the room, and you're like, shit, do I got to guess? Get I'm leaving. Door? Like, yep. This uh, motherfucker is mid fifties, I guess. Craig is. I don't know. And I think he's he said. I don't know if he caught my age, but he said, I'm 14 years older than you are, which would make him 55. Yeah, he's he's a few years away from retirement because he, he'll have the time in the mill. Yeah. But so this dude, though, like he looks old with his hard hat on. He takes his hard hat and glasses off. He looks younger than both yeah. of us. One and of those guys. You, you catch him in the, like, we don't get fucking, we don't shower in our locker room because we don't get dirty enough for that, right. right? But when you're changing with him and you look at his fucking thighs, they are that fucking big. Dude. You spend a lot of time looking He's at him. He's got thighs? Tree, Jason. Tree trunks. It's His impossible legs are fucking not trunks. to notice. He's one of those. It's just well, like you're fucking talking to him and he'll sit down and, and yeah. start changing his pants. His legs are fucking massive, and he's always Monsters. rubbing his knee. And it's like, yo, maybe if you weren't fucking running around at sixty miles an hour <laughs> all fucking day, your knee would be cool, bro. Yeah, like maybe chill out on the fucking uh, five hours. Grab yourself an ice pack and some Bengay and take it easy. Right, <laughs> like give it a break. That's different. Yeah, the jukebox is fucking strobing back. Yeah, here. I, I saw it out of the corner of my eye, get and I thought I, I thought it was just me for a minute Let's there. Let's get started in here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's been relatively chill. Uh, I haven't had to like run around like normal. What I will say is I'm very much looking forward to this weekend, just because of the fact that there's not a lot to do. Uh, committed to helping my wife's cousin tomorrow morning go with the truck, and he he wants a. He's buying an industrial sewing machine off of somebody from oh. like marketplace or something. So I told him I'd, I'd meet him over there and help him with that. Other than that, I got nothing on the docket for tomorrow. And then Sunday I'm helping Shishingo and Patty tear down at uh, Steel City Con in Monroeville. Oh, so we'll go hang out, uh, check out that for the first time. That'll be cool. And then uh, help them tear down their booth. And then I uh, guess we're going out to dinner. So that'd be cool. We're dragging the boy along. I figure fucking mm-hmm. he's bigger than me, so he should be able to carry more than me. Well. You know. And I'm sure he has no problem going to Steel City Con. You would think so. It's like, he he was pretty grumpy about it. It was almost like this, <laughs> yeah, dude. It was really? Like, oh. And I was like, come on, man. It'd be good to get out of the house. Mom makes me go walk every day. I'm like, yeah, but this is like a cool place. It's like a flea market with all the shit is like, he's like, I don't like comic books. I don't like to read. I don't want to read. And I'm like, we're not going to go read is that what yeah, you think a comic book you don't is? go sit there and, and like, read the book I'm, no i'm so angry i have to go look at 22 year old chicks dressed up like sailor moon right. all day like, yeah oh, uh, it's God like forbid. Now, granted this is in monroeville not fucking las vegas and shit but like dude there's gonna be people dressed up as stormtroopers yeah like every fucking movie that you love the shit that it's based on is what this thing is it's built a, Yeah, on. it's like, all going to represent it. He, he's going to find some shit to be, like, excited about. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, once he gets there and realizes what it actually is, he'll be into it. Not to mention the fact that someone's taken out, us out to dinner, 
and that boy fucking he's a four he's a fifteen year old boy now. He wants to fucking eat because he's a fifteen year old boy. Yeah, right. That's so it. my kids, I don't know what happened last week, but they their appetites doubled like all oh. three all three of them, and I'm like, I'm I telling you, right? they how old are they? Five. Oh, wow. they, all like, of them. <laughs> yeah, all, all seven of them. They're all five. No, all three of them. All three of them. Um, I have triplets. Oh, no fucking shit. Yeah, no, he wasn't joking. Oh, that's awesome. It, it's it's busy. <laughs> it keeps you busy. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I bet your wife was miserable during that pregnancy. That, look, I gave her the ingredients. She chose to cook the triple batch. <laughs> I had no part in that. That is the, all on her. The funny thing is, dude, if you if, when you meet his wife, you can be like, you had triplets oh, in yeah. you. Like, I guarantee you. With his genes, by the time they're 10 years old, they're all three going to be bigger than she is. Oh, and yeah. two of them are girls. Oh, she's a small chick. Uh -huh. Oh, she's fucking tiny, yeah. bro. He yeah. married a lawn dart. I, <laughs> I married a ballerina. Okay. Like, she was a legit ballerina when I met she's her. She's itsy That's... fucking busy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't fuck with her, though. Yo, yeah, she's mean. Don't fuck with her. Here, here's, here's the pecking <laughs> order. It's Christina Scales and then in a tie, both of our wives. We're, we're scared of all of them. For some reason, Chris Scales is like fucking good looking Jeff's wife. Oh, oh yeah. She's she scarier than me. the rest of them. Like, yeah. she's a lovely person. Mm -hmm. I enjoy being around her. But I, I, I am very aware of the fact that at some point, when I'm spending time in this woman's presence, I'm going to catch a backhand. Uh -huh. It's just going to happen. Yeah. I'm not going to know. She's very it, much mama bear. I have no idea it's going to be coming, but it's going to come, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably get that fucking wedding ring indent right on the side of my face. Yeah, it's, it's a hundred percent a sure thing. It's going to happen. <laughs> yes, Ryan, that is the, the bathroom <laughs> cigar guy. <laughs> Woo! Oh no! Oh yes! I'm infamous. <laughs> you have. You've been. got a title, sir. The, wait, the wait, bathroom cigar guy. Because Ryan was there. Yeah. So he was. Uh, he, He's Fucking not calling it out from us talking about it on the show. He's calling it out because he was there. Brian, you were like, you were like fucking a millimeter higher on him than the totem pole. <laughs> because while you were there, your fucking wife that was dis discharged from the hospital was fucking waiting in the hours car. beforehand. Just discharged. And she's like, he's, I was like, yo, where's your girl? He's like, ah, she's in the fucking car. <laughs> Didn't she I was just like, oh, out? like, is, is she good? And he's like, yeah, I'm just finishing this game of pool. Uh, how long has she been in the car? Like an hour. It's fine. <laughs> That's 100% <laughs> like, not an exaggeration. And he was super just like cool about it. And I'm like, I don't know if my wife would be pissed, like openly pissed, secretly pissed, or cool with it, though. Because like. Okay. There's no secretly piss with women. There, oh, there is with my wife. Because no, yeah, because she'll hold that secret for three months. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, uh, then the bomb drops. Maybe we're different. Yeah. The, here's the thing: there's not a secretly pissed. There's just a pissed off, but you don't know why for three months. With no, 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 no. Not. I know something's wrong. No. I just don't know what it is. Oh no, she'll play it up like it's fine. Mm. No big deal. It's good. You're good. And then all of a sudden, be like, remember that fucking time. I know I'm going to pay for this. And I'm like, wait a minute. It, it's like the Will Smith, Chris Rock thing. Like, Chris mm. Rock didn't respond. Six months later, he destroyed Will Smith. Like, it, it, did you guys see his comedy oh, special? Oh, yeah, that dude, was brutal. Dude, it was so bad. He's like, I wasn't the one tangled up with your wife. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then he just, dude, he went off. He off just called him a bitch for like 38 seconds. And his wife. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. both. He just... It was like five minutes of just constant, sh you bitches. You guys are bitches. <laughs> like the fact he didn't bring his kids into it impressed me because I I don't know if he could have gone any lower than where he did, and the fact he kept the kids out of it was like. All right, Chris, to be you fair, win. to be to fair, be, to be fair, his kids are adults, right? Right. You know, so like it doesn't matter. There is kids. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, but but, and, but it's also Chris Rock. Yeah, and that's why I'm, I'm so, giving Chris Rock credit. Like yeah. you didn't go there, mm -hmm. and now. You're the bigger man, even though you're half the man. This will very, 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 very likely come back to bite my, me in the ass. Mm -hmm. uh, but the pecking order just changed. It's Chris Scales, then Brit, then my wife. Because at least with my wife, I know when she's mad. Oh, no. Oh, it's not a secret. I just don't know why. Because, like, she's not good at pretending. Like, she is not she isn't. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like something's a little off. You cool? No, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, and then good. it's usually like within 48 hours. Like, I'm going to find out. 
the right amount of alcohol is going to enter her system or <laughs> and or, it's happening. or the right amount of irritation by me is going to come in and I'm going to find the fuck out <laughs> all the way but very much but that's the thing Brit Brit doesn't stew on it she gets joy I think from her anger like oh I'm going to fuck him up in like 3 months on this like oh, I yeah. I feel like she just like it brings her joy so she she peps herself right back up out of it she's good to go it's got terrifying a bad image in my head did you watch Reacher yeah, there's only one season, right? Yeah, Jay. Okay. okay, so Jay's irrelevant as always. You know the the fucking white suit squad mm-hmm. that comes in and fucking mops up the people for the loose ends. I feel like that's Brit now. Like, oh, I think I'm cool because I don't live with her and I don't see her very often. But like, if I say the wrong thing, maybe, just maybe, in three months. <laughs> Somebody in a white suit might come into my fucking house. If it makes you feel any better, I've never seen her do that trick to anybody except me. Yeah. Like, yeah, but you didn't see everybody else, they, they find out really fast. It's like, it's like trip hammer anger, right? So when she's mad, the trip hammer gets pulled back uh-huh. and then it's cocked there, just in a resting position, but, waiting for the but trigger it's, squeeze. It's, it's more like she starts a timer. Uh-huh. And when the timer dings, then it pulls the trigger. Oh, okay. is it like perfection? <clears throat> Okay, I get what you're yes, going with. Yes, there. sorry. I was like, wait, perfection. What movie? Oh, no, the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think she's watching. So when I see God, her from now not. on, I'm just going to be like, pop goes perfection. <laughs> <laughs> she won't know. And she'll she'll be, be like, like, yeah, I'm pretty perfect. Mm, yeah, whatever. And then fucking one day I'll find out. <laughs> and that's when Corey died. <laughs> that's when be he, like, knew fucking, he fucked up. When's three months from now? So it'd be like June, June, June July. She's going to be like, guess what? I saw that episode. Yeah, I watched that one, asshole. <laughs> I'm going to find yeah. out the hard way. Yeah. Well, 17 minutes, guys. Yeah, we should what tell, do you think? We should Is tell it time? what we're smoking. I think it's time. It's you, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's time for the Cigar of the Week, brought to you by Just the Tip Cigars. Are you looking for the best selection of boutique cigars? Do you want the tried and true legacy brands that are synonymous with the cigar lifestyle? Do you want luxurious cutters, lighters, and other accessories? Do you want to relax in the most comfortable cigar lounge in the Berg? Then you want Just the Tip Cigars. Conveniently located in the Bavarian Village Shopping Center in South Park, Pennsylvania, Just the Tip Cigars has been tailor-built to your smoking needs. Whether you visit in person or on the web, at justatipcigars.com. When it comes to cigars, Just a Tip is the whole package. Soon to be fine establishment. Soon to be fine establishment. I have oh. to know the story behind the sausage. <laughs> it's a silly sausage. <laughs> by the way, it could have meant so many things. By the way, it wasn't me that fucked up the segue. I, know. I just want to point he's, that he's out. It wasn't there. me. He's figuring it out. Uh, it was a topic of discussion with um, Patty and Chichingo. Our uh, and uh, Heather, our night. foundational fans. I, they are they like we we've got a lot of decent people in the ranks, mm-hmm. but Chichingo and Patty, Patty and Chichingo, definitely the originals. They are the OGs. That's why I'm helping them fucking move on. Someday. <laughs> but yeah, they uh, they were talking about how Heather has one of these, and she would bring it to work, and they would all just mess with it all the time because it's her giant silly sausage. So I was picking on her, and I was, I just kept saying like, "What the hell's a silly sausage?" So one showed up here. During the show one day, and you, you've that's seen the, the quick summary. Has he? You met little Corey, right? Yeah. So essentially, Sam got the silly sausage, and I got this because last time they were at Steel City Con, they were walking around, and they're like, "Holy shit, it's a Corey action figure!" Is is that like the whitewashed version of Luke Cage? No, it's supposed to be. Oh, you It's good supposed assessment. to be the Rock. Oh, okay. Cal- like not Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> what's the, what's the movie <laughs> about? A thousand things, and Calvin no, no, no. and Hobbes is not fucking one of them. There's a Hobbes in there, though. I'm sure there is There's something in Hobbes from the Fast and Furious. Oh, Sean, okay. Sean Hobbes, okay. something okay. like that. I know what you're talking about. Now. So it's it's like that standalone Fast and Furious thing. Okay. And this is supposed with like to Ludacris be... and fucking The well, Rock. And... I assume so. I've never seen it. I think like it's Jason Red Statham is the other. Okay, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think Red Man was in one, was it? Jason, he's like, yeah, yeah, fucking. Oh, I, I mean, I the Wu Tang Clan. And... Like, pretty, they, yeah, I'm pretty they sure all that didn't look happen. the same to him. Wow, you <laughs> are <laughs> terrible. <laughs> wow, with your Luke Cage references. That's right. I did, that's what that looks like. No, no you're right, dude. It's The Rock, but it's way too pale, and it and it looks way more like me than it does. It the surely rock. does. It looks uh, very much from the like, neck up. I agree. like a couple more a couple years ago. I didn't used to be so chiseled. <laughs> I mean, I'm not so chiseled now, but 
the fuck? It's not happy today. Us? No, it's not. Yeah. It's Jason's fault. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. We never had this problem before. Oh, maybe it's just got a cool new strobe function that I was not aware of previously. But yeah, so they fucking seen this at the Comic Con and they were like, that's fucking Corey. So they bought it for us. And then we got the Chingo bobblehead in the background. The yeah. the fact that it's wearing a watch is a nice touch. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and then uh, and that Chichingo bobblehead is actually Chichingo. That's that's Little. that's from like, like that's, his that's fucking him. college days. There was oh, fifty no of those. Like they like based it numbered. on him. Yeah, I if I'm not mistaken, did they have to buy that one off of eBay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, they bought a bobblehead. So imagine of- this dude. In fucking college, had fifty of these bobbleheads made. Why? Nobody fucking knows. No, no, no. It was for a fundraiser or something. They were like yeah, giveaway thing or something. Okay. But like, really though, like you're just a dude. Like, yeah. yeah. So he had fifty. They, the, there was fifty of these made, and so they were like, oh, they found one on eBay because apparently they're looking for that shit all the time. Like, let's just see if he pops up on eBay. I guess. And so they bought it, and then I, we were like, we fucking need that. For the cigar need, case, sure. So, it so they got has another to be one here. So they were like, "Yeah, okay," and they fucking gave it to us. No, they got two. They they got one, which is what how we found out about it. And then we were like so excited. I'm like, I got to see this. Is you and, were they and then they found another one and got well, us one. Well, Patty and Tachingo are monumentally generous people. Oh, very oh, much. Yes, s- just Mo- stupidly I, so. I was talking to him at that um, the Valentine's Day event at the, uh, the Polish club. Yeah, the Valentine's Day mm-hmm. event at the Polish club. Right. So, mm-hmm. like two weeks next was the St. Patrick's Day one, or it was a, a while further later. out. Yeah. And I show up, and I was talking to Tachingo about. You know, it would be cool to have a cigar from like back in the 1900s, like an old. Oh, bro! This dude shows up in with a cigar in a glass case, rolled in 1901 or uh-huh. some shit like that, and he was like, "Can you have man. something to do with your grandmother?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're talking about my great grandmother. That's around when she was born, and huh. I said, that'd be cool to have something from that era. And he just brings it. He was like, "I got one. I'll bring yeah. it in for you. Give it to you." Mm-hmm. And he did. I was, I was, t- yeah. touched and shocked. And that's was, who they was are. Awesome. Yeah, that's who they are. So there's really some, lovely. there's some good folk. I was working at Leaning House. My first night there, they came in with the Ash Hole Club. <laughs> so my first night, we're so far ended up being, from this segment. Ended Keep up going. being my busiest night that I had there, other than like an actual event night, like ten times. The amount of sales normally like it was just crazy busy and it's my first night and i'm by myself and i'm like oh this is okay this is gonna be a bit more than i expected but like i'm fine i you know I, I wanted to start my own shop so like this is what i'm here for cool super gracious great people and then four months later i post on facebook hey working at the house tonight it's my birthday come celebrate with me first off fucking love the cigar community yeah. all these people oh, yeah. i'd never met before in my life show up that's awesome and everybody was just like, you know, awesome about it. Earl, I'd met once or twice before that. He knew I was into scotches, so he brought me a whole tasting of Japanese whiskeys. <sighs> and not like, not the ones that we're buying. Like, right. really yeah. good whiskeys. And, uh, dude, phenomenal. Then Dave and Patty come in, and they give me a baggie with like eight cigars in it. And I think the newest Special. one was from like 1940. That's fucking awesome. And I'm like, they were all they're all pre embargo, all pre embargo Cuban. Cubans. And I'm like, holy shit! Like, the only one I didn't get was the 1901 out of like their vast collection of these old cigars. I'm like, I can't smoke this though. Like, the one I'm like, this is a hundred years old. Like, I can't smoke a hundred year old cigar. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I mean, you can. It would probably be garbage but but like I, i'm gonna glass case it and put it up yeah, at the shop like I, what, what, like i can't smoke this even if i knew it was still gonna be good i i couldn't bring myself to smoke it like it lasted a hundred years why would i not respect that to say that you did i mean if i had 50 of them like those guys do <laughs> but he yells at me he's like did you smoke that yet no to, to smoke p- it i'll give you another one to collect yeah. and i'm like bro like no, no, no. to I, put it in perspective you met them this year at valentine's day mm-hmm. I met them one year ago at that Valentine's Day. Yeah, that's right. That was when I first met them. That's pretty cool. We started the show last January. So the show's been going for a month, maybe. Yeah. There's like three or four episodes out, right? And uh, we meet up to go to this thing together. It was like the first public thing we ever did First time we were in the same place, yeah. Yeah. Well, other than when we met initially for like the, hey, is this going to work? And so like we go like, okay, we're going to both hang out at this thing. And uh, he introduces them to me, and they're like, yo, we love the show. And I'm like, what the fuck? 
what? Really? Like, I didn't expect <laughs> to meet anybody in person. Not a clue it was like, what we are. Yeah, like, right? And uh, they hand me, like, an identical bag of fucking pre embargo Cuban cigars. I'm like, who the fuck are these people? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fucking pharmacists and shit. And I'm like, yeah, I know what that means. Yeah, right. You know, street pharmacists. Uh, no, yeah. It's actually, like, legit. But yeah, no, exactly the same thing. I left that event feeling, like, so high on life. Yeah. I was like, looking at my wife, I'm like, I'm Tim Taylor. <laughs> she said, what? <laughs> and I was like, there are people that like my shit that's on like channel 151 on cable in the middle of the afternoon like fucking i've got two fans and shit like that's i'm like my head's not big right like i'm like duh i'm a fucking like low life idiot and shit for sure but like how cool is that like fucking i went out and they're like we're fans of your shit and i was like that's fucking cool as hell dude that still gets me i checked anchor the other day and like we dropped the last episode and it was like instant like the day that you dropped it 35 listens Really, and they were all like complete I listens, and I'm like, "That's great!" Like, there's Come, thirty-five people listen to the whole thing front to back. Yeah, it, on the day it dropped, and then oh, that's awesome. Like the numbers keep going. You know, I mean, they, they don't stay that high. You yeah. know, it Stop spikes it when something drops, but like, but you got to figure like, too. Well, last week's would have had a little bit of an uptick because a lot of our regular listeners right. were not here for the live show. But, like, most of our tight group that we know, like, that's in that fucking list I made last week, mm. they're all here watching it on Facebook Live. Yeah. So those, they don't show up in our numbers. They're not They're not there on the listens. They're not there on Spotify. They're not there on YouTube. They're not there on those numbers because they're fucking here hanging out with us while we're doing the show. Sure. So. That's the other thing. I mean, Ryan, I, I don't know who else is here, but, like, these guys give us their Friday nights. Yeah, like, that's 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 important. amazing. That's it's awesome to hang out with these people. Like yeah. this is I've said it so many times. This is the point I look forward to every week. This is the reset, bro. This is not like especially for people like all of us that do not have a normal schedule. Yeah. Like you know how like usually everybody gets out like okay, Sunday's going to be the day that I'm going to like Friday's the day where you get to let loose and then yep. you got fucking the weekend and then you got Sunday to like kind of gather your shit yeah. back up. We for don't the have week. that. This is my reset point for the week. Like this is where I go. This is what I've been waiting for. It's so much like it did, there's a little bit of work into it as you're starting to kind of discover mm. on the back end. Um, but I mean, it's it's really like. It is a labor of love. Like yeah. it is like fucking. We're gonna do this shit no matter what. We decided right at the beginning, like two people listen. That's enough. Yeah, we that's just it. like doing it. Yeah, but it, it's so cool to have people that like coming and hanging out with us when we do. But that's where you'll find success. The the fact if you're like you know what if two people are listening, that's great. Yeah, because you you will take those two people, and there are going to be two more people that are like those two original people, and and you will eventually build. You're not trying to be as generic as you possibly can be so you can reach an audience yeah. as wide as you can reach as quickly as you can reach no, it. Yeah. So you will actually build through that. You will build a loyalty that is did runs as deep as blood. Yeah. It's, but it's, it's not so cool. It's not the building. I think that is the most humbling. It is the people that come back every week when you're like, oh, no these people are here week after week after week after week like they are listening all the time yeah mm. and like look forward to it like i remember the first time we had to do a show at a different time than we normally did or whatever or we missed one or something yeah. like that and fucking seth jones this dude from you don't know seth jones really yet this dude from connecticut was just like Yo, man, fucking, I was tweaking. Like, I couldn't get my fix this week. I did, yeah. And it was like, that's, like, really fucking a cool thing to hear. Sure. When I you're just a couple on Friday night. jackasses sitting in the fucking garage hanging out. And there was a long time. Like, I've we've hung out, mm. off, obviously, a lot more since that beginning. But still, when I you see Sam, he's usually kind of tight-laced and shit. Yeah, mm. I'm busy. You'll notice, when you see him outside of here... When that happens, very rarely will you ever see him as happy and relaxed <laughs> as he is here. And it's just because this is the hour and a half to two hours every week where his brain is off of everything else other than this. And that's like why it's therapeutic, yeah, right? Because you come it, in here, all that other shit's fucking yeah. gone. 
Yeah, and I it's have like, a lot going on. So what it's kind like, of happy shit do I have to talk about? Like the what, what were the good things? And they're, they're you know the first five minutes is usually reserved for the, if you have a bitch, fucking drop it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like get it out there. Let's fucking talk about it. Let's unload. But after that, it's like. This is like, okay, let's talk about the good shit. Let's fucking party. Yeah. And and you won't see him like this outside of here. Not usually. No. It, he he's he's fucking tuned up and having some <laughs> fucking fun. If you see him look it's like my, this outside. Opportunity. <laughs> that's yeah. it. And that's what I'm saying. Like, this is the reset. And uh after that 20 minute interlude, yeah, let's well. talk about the fucking <laughs> the cigar of the week. Sorry about that. 30 minutes in. Should we play the, the segment? No. I was yeah. thinking about don't, it. Don't, don't. It's time for the cigar of the week brought to you by Leaning it's House Fine Cigars. No, the Leaning House. No, that's not. not that one. There you go. You're welcome, Dave. That one's on the house. Yeah, there you go. I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but it's time for the cigar of the week there, brought to you by just the tip cigars. Are you looking for the best selection? Of the the reason I had to do it because we were on the same Yum. page. I was literally sitting here thinking, like, it's been so long, I'm gonna have to play the bump again. Like, it's been so <laughs> fucking long. I'm going to have to play the commercial again. Oops. Nobody knows where the fuck we're at. So yeah. that was just like a, a, week. a hard cool. reset. Uh, this week, we are smoking <laughs> fucking for anybody that doesn't know, because we don't have a banner up either. Because yeah, I didn't pick uh, the cigar until last night. That's correct. So. I, how many times did I reach out? No, and so I did pick it the night before, and I wrote the text to you. Yeah. And I never hit send. <laughs> look at fucking uh, Ryan Seneca picking it out in the fucking chat room. Look at him. That's why look he's at the consigliere, bro. Yeah, bro. I know, right? He's, he's going to think. This week, it is the Christoph Maduro. It is a five and a half by 54 Robusto uh, with a Brazilian, Brazilian Maduro <laughs> wrapper. I don't know. Fucking it's the booze, bro. Uh, Nicaraguan binder and filler from Nicaragua as well. Oh, okay. Uh, established in 2004 by Glenn Case. Uh, they are known for pigtails and loose tobacco in the boxes. The cigars are made using centuries-old bunching technique called entubar. If you're not familiar, that's a typical Cuban practice. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Uh, fair enough. He's like, dude, I'm anxious. I've been waiting 20 minutes for, to find out what the damn cigar is. <laughs> Get him! Use chat GPT. To uh, the skillful what bunching in. method creates a more firmly packed cigar, which allows air travel to between the, the leaves. Carrying more aromatics and flavor to the palate. Every cigar is then individually dry tested to ensure a well constructed cigar. It delivers a perfect draw every time. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, what I love about that is I like to imagine, so I'm sure this is not factual, but I would just like to imagine for the last 32 minutes, fucking Ryan Seneca is sitting in front of his humidor going, which one? Like, kind of looks like this maybe it's that <laughs> just fucking... tell me what i'm smoking god damn it i want to smoke a cigar let me know <laughs> what, what the is fuck it? is it <laughs> oh that's fantastic yeah right yeah. no yeah. It, it's spot on too he's just fucking pacing <laughs> is that uh, no. No, 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 no the problem is we we cut off the pigtail yeah otherwise he didn't know he didn't yeah, know that I, shit. I don't know the, the second Did it have a i i love that they do oh yeah I love that they do dual band. Yeah. <clears throat> like, you got your Kristoff band, and then right. you tell me what the fuck it is. I Indeed. love that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Glenn. Yes. Especially, like, man. for retail, right? Tatawahe, somebody brings me up one. There's no barcode on them, because they don't have cello on them. So, what do you do? You look at it, and you're like, all right, it's a Tatawahe. Now, I got to fucking remember oh, what every one of those Tatawahe. 50 SKUs Bro. looks like. Okay, so it's the red with the white, or is the red the the black so with the red, or what you... Like you just have to guess mm -hmm. mostly at them. It, 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 at Leaning House, I, I just walk into the humidor. I'm like, I, I, hold on a second, man. I'll be right back. I got to check something. The price isn't it's right like, on this. Walk what are you in, smoking? Look. Tatuahi. Which one? Fuck a fine out. It's yummy. That's, <laughs> you, that's, that's what I got. You can get away with that when you're Pete Johnson and Tatuahi yeah. cigars because your cigars have a consistency to them. And yeah. It's like, ah, I'm yeah, going to prop. So and, and they're so similar. I don't want to say there's no differentiation. Oh, yeah. But at the same time there's there there's not as big of a gap yeah. i think as some some shit where you have like the traditional four blends right yeah so like you're like okay i could pretty much walk in there and as long as it has that symbol on it i'm gonna be cool yeah they, they don't make a bad cigar well they also make most of their cigars in the same like wheelhouse yeah so you're not gonna be like oh this one's way too fucking light or this one's way too heavy you know what i mean chris scales just showed up no, she's been here. Oh, okay. 
And she's saying hi to oh, Heather because Heather. Heather just showed up. Yeah, see, I got nothing. It's not telling me on the tablet. <laughs> yeah, I don't Whatever. know what to tell you. I give bro. up. I, I tried I'm to fi- fucking I'm give you. I'm fine with some, it. I don't mind. You got accessories. You I know what I mean? I'm like you were jealous of the buttons. I was like, I gotta get fucking Sam something. We gave him like the nice mobile uh, chat room slash monitor and shit. Nothing's ever enough, you know? Yeah. Hi, Heather. I want to say this episode, among others, like for as unsure as we were before we hit the record button, right? For anybody just coming in right now, we're like, yo, the vibe dude, it's ain't always right. like this too. The vibe ain't fucking right. And Sam, Sam even said, he said, maybe we hit the button. And I'm like, maybe if I put we back this fucking gla- half a glass of fucking uh, Irish whiskey, yeah, you know, half a. Um, but it's 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 delightful, and like you know, sometimes you'll you'll find that you roll into this shit, and you're like, oh, this don't feel right. Yeah. And sometimes you think it's good, and then you get like to the end, and you're like, that was a fucking mess. Wow. But sometimes it's like, man, yeah, you when, never know what this shit's gonna do. When I was in like the full like ass kickery part of putting the shop together, I'd come in here just pit like. I I would just tell him like I don't want to fucking be here today, mm-hmm. like I I got too much to do like I let, let's just do this shit I'd be sitting here and then he hit the button and be like hey all right let's fucking go dude like he'd just like let's fucking go the guitar riff kicks in and it's yeah. just it, it, it's it like it, it's a switch you. yeah it's like all right time to play yeah so, and it's like the only the only music I've done for a podcast yet because everything else I stole uh, on here from like just public access on Stream Deck and shit and then I had Wade do the music for the Lassians. So, like, that's the only riff I've actually put together for my own podcast. Because yeah. I was originally thinking, like, I'm going to do all of them. And I was like, I only know, like, four chords. How, how many different arrangements <laughs> could I put this shit in? I love the axis of awesome. Every time somebody says four chords, that's just... Did you ever see that video? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a great video. Dude. Yeah, dude, it is. They go through so many dun, songs. Dun, 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 dun. It's fucking what rolling that? through that, That's a journey. We Don't never wrote believing. a four four chord song that's why we never made the, yep. the hits or whatever yeah that's why but i was like you know come on barbie let's go party but i wrote i did that before i had sam yeah. the music predates him because yeah. it was like before i do any of this like i've got to have everything else has to be ready to go like the audio quality's got to be there the fucking music's got to be there well that's like you were talking about the four chords like green day green day was the king of three chords like all of their songs is three chords Fuck right. da, 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 Fuck da. Them. that's it Billy Armstrong, whatever fuck it. I mean, you is. can't fuck argue. That bitch. It's 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 like it's like with the Beatles, and I am going to go out on a limb here and say something that is liable to piss a lot of people off. I do. yeah, that's our mo, bro. Yeah, Get some. I do not like the Beatles. You. However, I do not diminish their contribution to rock and roll. Okay. I wish I had a <gasps> button. <laughs> I was like, yeah. no, fucking, there's a. I, I do not diminish there. their contribution to rock and roll because I understand that without the Beatles, the modern right. rock wouldn't be what it is. But, and you've got to give the same credit to Green Day and punk music and grunge music mm. and shit like that because Green Day, Green Day was the face of the 90s for a yeah. long time. Yeah, but I feel like that motherfucker always had his uh, ball sack and like a clothespin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's trying to sing, but there's something else going on there. Sometimes I give myself the creeps. Please take this clip off of my balls. <laughs> As he hits every note. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like it's fucking. Ar- Here's the thing. The music that I tend to hate more than any other music, and I think this is true of a lot of people, is. The shit that gets in your brain and uh, Because it's clearly words. a hit right? Mm. Like it's clearly <laughs> memorable But you don't like it But you can't fucking forget it I, That's what makes something fu- That's like a good heel in a movie You know what I mean Like It's like oh fucking I hate you But you're, you're like You're, you're bro, so good at being bad <laughs> I can't tell you the last day that I didn't have from Frozen 2 stuck in my fucking head. <laughs> Yo, that's a jam, though. Dude, she, I mean, she nails it. Mm. But, like, fucking seriously. I gotta watch that new fucking mermaid shit. Dude, there were some jams in that fucking song, that movie. Is that out yet? I don't think so. Oh, okay, it isn't. Okay, yeah. I'm good then. We I'm actually good. just rewatched it the other day, the kids. So, like, full disclosure, like, there has a tendency for cigar smokers to be a little older. And in a certain yeah. demographic, and I'd say that there's probably a lot more Republicans than fucking Democrats. So if you're like, I don't think that's ah, even a thing black anymore. Girl, like, she can't be the mermaid. Um, 
I, I don't think so either, but I think there is still a tendency. Yeah. So it's like, if that's your feeling, fuck you. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, I don't give a shit. Yeah, don't be an asshole. It's yeah, fine. no. Fucking if it's good, it's good. Yeah. But, yo, there were some jams on that shit. The seaweed is always greener right? in somebody else's lake. <laughs> oh, so when you were talking about Green Day, uh, Chris said, stuff sinuses. Oh, yeah, talk, yeah. Talk about Green Day? Billy oh, Dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I thought we were talking about Jason for what a second. I was like, like I thought it was all right. Yeah, he yeah. was definitely me, nasally. Me, 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 me. La, 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 la. Yo, well, do, you, do you have a good time? You, you weren't up on. You're never up on the deck for the shows at the fucking house. No, I, I don't. Which sucks. It was a lot of fun that last one with fucking yeah. the regular Joes and shit. Like I was thinking about just going and popping into one of their gigs because after their guitar player got shit faced and started trying to fuck everybody, <laughs> um, I missed that part. Just throwing that really? out there. Really? Yeah, I missed it that might part. have been overshadowed by somebody else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My brown eyed girl. Yeah, ha- well, with that too. Um, but uh, no, dude, like fucking. So essentially, what happened was I played. I paid twenty bucks to hear a song. And then they essentially just fucking screwed me out of it, and I because of him. And then it I, I paid twenty bucks for another song, and they were like, "Well, we can play it, but we don't, we can't sing it. So if you want to sing it, you're good." And I'm like, oh, "Okay." The fucking moment and shit, you know. So I like hopped up there and shit. <laughs> Chris said, "Awkward." Yeah. Then they pulled me in for another one and shit, and I was like, "Yo, fucking, I'm gonna go hang out with these guys and just see if they call me up and shit because trying to fucking get my own people together sucks." <laughs> Like, that shit ain't fucking happening. Gotta get the band back together, bro. So I'm just gonna follow these guys around until they're like, hey, you just want to be in the band. (laughs) Then you'll have one more thing on your plate. I like, I like, here's the thing. That's one thing that was already scheduled to be on my plate, Mm. right? Like, it really was. Like, I was developing it, and then I was like, yo, I'm not even gonna do a band. I just want an acoustic tour. Because that way I don't have to worry about motherfuckers not showing up. We'll just fucking two you guys. Get the second person. Well, like for a while it was, and then he fucking bailed, and I was like, "Son of a bitch!" I was like, "What the fuck, bro?" He's like, "Well, I don't know. I felt like I looked stupid up there because I don't sing and I can only play as good as you." And I'm like, "You got a fucking mullet, and I've never seen you wear sleeves, and you're afraid of looking stupid <laughs> <laughs> because you're doing the same shit as me." I'm like, "Well, you know, we're a little different and shit, but like, it's nice to have an accompany." company and guitar and shit like i was like expanding my catalog of sure. songs and shit and i'm like that's kind of fucking beat and then uh he keep reaching out to me for other projects i'm like what the fuck are you doing bro do you want to fucking play or not he's like yeah but i don't want to be the only one standing next to you i feel dumb all right whatever <laughs> i i think <laughs> feel I better think- I think the two guitar players and the, and a microphone and a microphone that, that's that's swine. where it's at. Yeah. yeah, you know you you can two two nice sounding acoustics. <laughs> I understood that reference. I understood <laughs> it too. Uh, no turntables though. No, uh, no turntables. Though. The tables, but turn. like a cajon. I think I think that you and I were talking about that. Yeah, before, Dougie I Doug. I was trying to get Dougie Doug. He come over here one a time. What? So I don't think a cajon. A cajon. A cajon. A cajon? So a cajon is um, it's a acoustic, yeah, it's an acoustic version of drum. Okay. It's a box. Mm-hmm. What is it? Is what it is. And like generally you sit on it and the guy will sit there and oh, yeah, yeah. beat like the different sides have different sounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like an acoustic drum set. And fucking Dougie Doug come over to one he was like, yo, Evan. You know Evan. Yeah. Evan comes over, and hangs out with me, you know, quite a few times and was the one time he was like, Yo, fucking my dad's got a cajon. I'm gonna get him to come over. And so like the two of us are jamming on acoustics in here, and he's just fucking beating around on his box and shit. It's fun. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time. I don't know why, but when you said that, I was thinking of the Ocarina. Cajones. I don't uh, know why, uh, but like I went to the Ocarina, and I'm like, that's that can't be Zelda. The Ocarina. Yeah. Ocarina. Thank you. There we go. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not up to my Ocarina. It's okay. I've been. I've been playing fucking stupid instruments since I was like fucking fourteen years. He plays. Exactly. Did you see the girl on uh, Instagram, Ocarilla, Ocar- whatever the fuck it is? Yeah, girl. the chick that dresses up like an elf. But dude, like she plays like two of them. beautiful music, dude. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, she's I'm not very, interested very in her or that instrument. But like she plays, and I'm like, all right, I'll just listen to this for a little bit. Like, yeah, that's yo. Like, I have seen it. Why does that sound so good? Like that does that makes no sense that it sounds so awesome. I see the chick the other day do the bagpipes for the fucking uh, solo on Freebird. Yeah. I was like, I saw that too. Yo, I'm Scottish. Like, that's the, mo- like, I'm a mutt, but that's the most proud ancestry I have. Right. That's it. That's the spot. And I was huh? like, 
yo, I got like a fucking a history boner kind of going on right there. You those want to talk are, about fucking Claymores? I've got one in the other room. Um, his fucking company was called Claymore, and uh, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, that's fucking cool as shit. And I was like, I wanted to send it to my dad, and I was like, I don't know. I, don't know I want to know what he does with this video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sending it to my father because he may or may not. Never mind. Yeah, um, hey, here's the thing. Our shit ain't that awkward. Like, I've thanked my dad for not wiping me off on a napkin. Like, straight up. I was like, enough. Dad, yeah, thank you for not wiping me off. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> well, I don't know, man. Like, I know shit could have gone a different way. You know, yeah. if, like, you and Mom hadn't reconciled that one time, like, I'd have been <laughs> I'd have been in a crusty sock under your bed until fucking you <laughs> moved away and shit, you know? <laughs> oh, shit. And that's Corey, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I don't hold back. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about cigars for a second, uh, if we have to. I mean, we. I mean, I, I don't. I don't even actually feel obligated to anymore. No, I, just, I don't either. I, I. I want to. If there wasn't, I swear to God, if we didn't have the word cigar in our title, we'd have so much broader appeal. Because yep. I, I think that title was very misleading. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Ryan Seneca just said, "I just had the same conversation about my mom." About my mom. If well, your mom didn't come in a sock? Right. That I'm kind of like, I'm curious how you have that conversation about your mother. Like, you can have that conversation with your mother yeah. or to your mother, but about your mother? Like, like mom, I'm or, dad. I'm glad dad busts yeah. inside you. Like, right. Like, I'm glad oh, that, that happened. I got it. I got it before he says it. He said, thank you for not swallowing me. Oh, oh okay. 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 I, 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 I didn't guarantee know. you that shit comes in there at some point, but that's what it is. It was, I thanks didn't know, for not swallowing me, mom. I didn't know if it was going to be. Uh, that's some fucked up shit. I'm my own grandpa. Uh, or or oh, can't have it. What? Oh, she's. God in damn it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Man. mine too. Yeah, Actually, my mom's bitch, not in the casket. Like, she's blown in glass. She was cremated. I had her ashes. I know, done. but I, because of the conversation, I went a different way, and I was stopping myself mm, from verbalizing. Very much, that. very much. So I was just taking like, a moment to not say. We've what, all made. What I was thinking. We've all made choices. Rude. What were you thinking? No, we've it was no. Choices. Come on, do no, it. No. You said glass and blown. Yeah. So we were thinking pipe. My mom was blown, and then I didn't hear anything after that. Oh. And I was like, oh, I heard the glass. No. See, I heard the glass. I, yeah, I didn't at first, mm. and then yeah, thankfully, mm. yeah. We, it, so, anyway, cigars. <clears throat> They're a thing that we smoke. They're delicious. Um, no, I... So, I'm not a... Too much. Couldn't tell. Um, <laughs> no, the... Uh, Christoph has an eight-pack sampler. That's a, that's a weird number. Yeah, but it's, you know, Connecticut, Criollo. I, I don't remember what all is in there. But Jason I, Cam. I love it for people that are, like... I want to like learn the differences in cigars a little bit. It, it's really good for that. Like it's actually a, a good sampler. Sampler for... packs are nice, and I'm not talking about the one on CI where you get a hundred right. cigars for fifty bucks. Yeah, hundred shitty cigars for fifty bucks. And then the ones that you don't like, you send to your kid in Pittsburgh, which is how I got into cigars. Unfortunately, it was a it was a probably a much longer process than it needed to be because of that. And off of Jason Kim, you just actually went to the Jason Kim. Oh. Double back. There you go. Uh, um, <laughs> seagulls. Stop it now. Love it from Heather. Um, but yeah, the I love I love the fact that like most of the sampler packs, like Perdomo does, like the Sun Grown collection. They do, you know, they, they they keep it like here's your your Maduros, here's your Connecticut's. Like they 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 keep the theme in most sampler packs. I like that they didn't do that with that because it gives people the diversity. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing for them. Um, I was gonna do it, and I looked at you to see what you wanted. I didn't get. Anything, I was just. So. I'm just gonna keep going because every we the the first like five episodes, I just belch and and so like I would mute it or I'd try to turn away, and he'd be like, "Just do it into the microphone, dude." It, it's so fucking loud. It didn't matter. Like, don't like. It's just like, <laughs> rah. okay, you might as well go. Rah. Yeah. See, I'm only punishing myself because I'm definitely gonna have to chop the volume down on that one. Yeah, because it was it was all up in there. It was a lot. Mm-hmm. But now, That's pretty good. back to the cigars. I like the fact that they have a diverse selection. So, like somebody who who's new to cigars and be like, "What do you like?" I don't know. Here, take mm-hmm. these eight cigars. Yeah, smoke these eight. Mm-hmm. Tell me which ones suck. Tell me which ones were bearable. Tell me which ones were good. Tell me which one was excellent. Like, here you go. Tell me your your favorite out of those. I just, I love the the fact they actually packaged a good sampler. The only problem I have is it's not in a humidity pack. It's in a little plastic slider glass like faux glass top box. So you still got to put it in a humidor. So like somebody who's new 
doesn't have a humidor that big. Like now, you know, it's got a nice presentation to it, so it's kind of a pain in the ass. Oh. I'm just thinking about what Heather's coconut oh. is. <laughs> I don't know. Is it similar to Patty's pineapple? <sighs> yeah. Not going there. <laughs> Not fucking happening, bro. Well, 50 minutes in, it feels like a good time to go to the next segment. Get out your silly sausages because it's time for the news of the week. It's time for the cigar news brought to you by Tom's Penworks. As a cigar smoker, you appreciate luxury. And as a premium cigar smoker, you appreciate handmade craftsmanship. And as a customer of Tom's Penworks, you'll appreciate the selection of custom-made, limited production items that you can show off to your friends. From handmade pens, pencils, bottle openers, cigar cases, and now custom rings, Tom will create something special for you or your loved one. Find them on the web at etsy.com slash shop slash Tom's Penworks. And as always, you can find the link in the description for this episode. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fucking news. I forgot to delete a hyperlink. That's okay. I used a little bit of blue ink this week. Aww. All right, here we go. How many things is that? Seven, it looks like. Six. One of them is a double. Uh, uh, like from last week, like, the rose gold? No, the epic cigars. And then this is actually still part of it. Oh. So you'll, you'll figure it out. Like when you get to the uh, end, yeah. yeah, but also I think the rose gold is from last week, so I can cut that one out too. Sweet. Five items. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, JC oh, Newman oh. Cigar Company has announced its long awaited Angel Quest line. It'll be released initially to 25 retailers who are members of the TAA. In addition, the company also says the cigars will be available at its factory store located in El Rito. Uh, factory in Tampa, Florida. First introduced at the 2022 uh, PCA trade show, the cigar is named for Angel La Madrid Cuesta, one of the founders of the Cuesta Ray cigar brand. I, I didn't even read the Cuesta Ray part, so I'm glad I got it right because I know I know that name. Yeah, Angel Cuesta joins the American as two brands that are rolled at the El Roja fac- or El Rilo factory uh, because it's only rolled by a team of two rollers that produce 150 cigars a day. The product is quite limited in terms of availability. Epic Cigars and Big Golf team up for the big stick. I don't know anything about that. Get your big stick at just the tip. No, mm-hmm. With cigars and golf, happen. a popular combination, Dean Pearson's of Epic Cigars have teamed uh, I'm sorry, Dean Pearson's and Epic Cigars have teamed up with a big golf to launch the big stick. A big stick is a slang term used to describe the driver that is in a golfer's bag. I don't know why. I mean, what if you're holding it? I don't know. A cigar features an Ecuadorian Habano Cuban seed wrapper with a Nicaraguan filler and binder from Dominican and Nicaragua. Uh, each of the cigars has been aged for one year prior to release, and production comes from Tabacuera von Eichen and Santiago Dominican Republic, the longtime factory of Epic Cigars. The big stick comes in one size, a six and a half by 54 Toro, which I, begs the question, is it really a big stick? Do you want it to be bigger, though? Like, I don't want it right. to be, but is it worthy of the name? I feel like Toro is average now. I feel like Toro is the biggest cigar that I want to smoke, so that's fine. That's relatively fair, depending on how to you want to. What, what about a to be fair? To be fair. What about a Churchill? I, I love Churchill too. Yeah, yeah. I mean you're, I you're mean, pretty. As long close. as you don't have draw like draw issues, they're fantastic. Yeah. So what's up? Have you had Epic Scores? Sorry, I don't off. know that I have. I, I don't think I have yet. No. I think I have a couple. Chasing eight. I, I think fucking I fucking know that. <laughs> I don't I know I why I looked at him. I think I have a couple from PCA, but don't I, look so fucking shocked, you amateur ass <laughs> motherfucker. I, I know. New ass bitch. Wow. Crusader ass Cigars bitch. announces the Casa Magno Liga T. Oh, no. Liga FTAA exclusive for 2023. It's a 6x54 box press Toro version of the Casa Magno Liga. Uh, in a press release, President Manuel Casada commented the Liga F is the first Dominican made Casa Magno. When blending a box press cigar, we have a new experience of smoke with different notes and intensities using the same tobaccos as the original and regular shapes. And I personally recommend it as an intense and flavorful pressed Casa Magna Liga F. I don't know why I slowed down there. I just did. I really enjoy Casada cigars. Uh, they're okay. I like them. Yeah. I like the Oktoberfest. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I've done like one other one, and I remember it being an okay experience, yeah, I, but I haven't gotten heavy. I think I've had three or four different ones. I can't remember which ones I've had, but they were all good cigars. I tell you what, they own that Q part of the alphabet. Not yeah. a lot of Q cigars yes. out there. Yeah. yeah, not real, not real a, a big letter in the uh, Spanish language. 
portfolio there. Not a lot of cues. I don't know enough Spanish to say if that's true yeah, or not. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Case of the year. Monte Cristo 1935 hit edi- uh, okay, anniversary so. edition Diamante announced. The uh, 35 an- anniversary is described as a more dialed back uh, compared to the original Monte Cristo 1935 anniversary Nicaragua. The blend uses all Nicaraguan tobaccos, as you would expect by the name. According to a report by Cigar Aficionado, the blend features a low priming hybrid Cuban seed wrapper from Jalapa region and a binder from Ometepe and three fillers from Esteli. Uh, the line is being released in six soft press uh, sizes. Each size is presented in 10 count boxes. How do you feel about Ometepe? What do you mean? The 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 tobacco, like from the Ometepe region. Have, I, I'm not good enough. Doesn't, to, doesn't, doesn't I'm, I'm strike you enough, to, I'm not good enough to differentiate that from Jalapa. But I mean, that's the least so unique. When that, you like, do, there's, I don't remember who makes it, but there's actually a line called Oma, uh, that has like Ometepe in, in the heading. Okay. It's uh, it's spicy. If I'm remembering properly, it's actually volcanic, the volcanic region, uh, that the Ometepe is grown in, and it's definitely got like a little bit more kick to it. So it's something to keep your eye out on in the future. Really? Yeah. And the Camacho Factory Unleashed Three has been announced by Davidoff. Uh, the third release of the Factory Unleashed series meant to showcase the innovation and craftsmanship of Camacho's factory at uh, Diadema Cigars de Honduras, I say. Uh, this year's installment features a Mexican San Andreas wrapped blend of Honduran binder and fillers from Honduras and the Dominican Republic. Like the pr- two previous versions, the Camacho Factory Unleashed 3 features a shaggy foot uh, and comes in one size, a 6x50 Toro. That runs Good, us good correction, by the way, because you have footer on there. But you 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 fixed it. You're like, yeah, that, this guy was an idiot when he wrote this. I'm, sometimes I'm I fuck it up really bad when I do the read, and sometimes I autocorrect yeah. in my head. No, that was good. At least at just the perfect amount of booze. Slow down randomly again. Yeah. So that was nice. Hey man, it adds character. <laughs> uh, for anybody who cares, something else I found out uh, today: uh, STG will actually be at PCA again. What what's Seneca saying in here? There's He's all impressed that you happening. put the news on the uh, that you actually have it on. Like, show, you have like a letterhead for it. Like, how else would I know the news? Just off the top of my head, or but reading like, it from Google? But why do you need it to say the yeah, no. this podcast at the top and like episode number and all that? Like, you actually do like. There's a little bit of production. Yeah, that's value what I'm saying. Like, you shit. do a yeah. thing. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but, I, um, I was I, saying I, I found out that STG will actually be back at PCA again now. Uh, I think okay. a lot of that's because, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Of, I didn't put it in there because I figured well, fuck them. They got well. They got a bunch of flack last year because they bought Room 101 or officiated the deal like a week before so stg was there yeah in the room 101 booth but like behind a curtain so like a lot of people were pissed <laughs> like hey if you there, want a yeah. booth buy a fucking booth if you don't don't buy a booth like don't piggyback you know because it, it screws people up yeah so this year they bought alec bradley and now they're like they're using alec bradley's space that alec bradley had already paid pca for and they're so like, we'll screw see it. if it continues so they're bringing well this year they're, they're that booth is going to have Room 101, Alec Bradley. Uh, there were six of them total that they're going to yeah. be presenting there, which that's uh, cool. It, it's nice to see because, like, build PCA back up again because, like, right now, TPE it, is... It often feels like the big four, um, the, like the publicly traded companies, are fighting against the rest of the industry, and that is not something we need. So showing up for PCA is a good thing. Right. Well, I, I haven't been to TPE, so I can't speak to it. Most people have told me that it's superior at PCA, like significantly better. And mostly because everybody shows up to it. Yeah. And the thing is, with the size of the investment to actually have a giant booth there, one befitting somebody like STG, Forged, you know, like for them to actually show up and put the money out, they're going to, like, they're not going to show up and get a small booth. Like, right. they're going to be there. They're going to be there. Yeah. And I understand, like, wanting to do one or the other. But, like, you know, Drew Estate not being a PCA anymore, I guess that screwed a lot of stuff up because nobody realized how much stuff Drew Estate actually paid for. It worked. Did you really just kick that back on? Fonzie. I'm going to watch it right here. I just you wanted did to too. see. You <laughs> did, too. You straight to up just like, I'm going to smack the shit out of that bitch and get I it back on. I think if I learned anything from TV, <laughs> this should work. That's, what I, that's where my mind was. Yeah. Um, no, I, and I appreciate you bringing that up. It was... So when I filter through the news segments, it's like there's a lot of shit every week that I'm like, okay. And I was telling Jason, it's like, you got to kind of look at it and go, how much is there? What do I want to take and whatnot? Right. 
So on a slow week, I'll include more, mm-hmm. right? Just because it's like you got to fill it with something. Um, but in a, in a week like this where I was like, okay, I've got enough. I'm not going to put that in there. But if there's like a genuine conversation to be had that's organic around it, I'm to be definitely had. down with it. To be had. Dude, it, so it was funny. I'm getting ready to leave the house, and my phone just like blew up with emails all of a sudden, like 12 emails all at once. And I can't even remember who all it is, but like most of the companies are putting out a price increase. And they all announced it at 4 o'clock or at 5 o'clock on a Friday. <laughs> All of them sent the email at five, like at five o'clock on the money, like getting ready to walk out of the door. And I was like, really, 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 really? Like, you really? bastards. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's going to be coming too. Is, you know, and most of the increase. Alrighty then. Sorry, I thought there was going to be more of a delay on that. No, so I figured good. you were going to get to trail off and then it would kick in. No, but uh, I mean, none of the increases were huge, but four months ago, they weren't huge when they did it. Four months before that, they weren't huge when they did it. Like, it, it's it's pretty much a. Uh, every third of the year, if not every quarter, they're they're bumping up. So, yeah, be, that's right. Be ready to see that in your shops because it's it it's, happens. Unfortunately, it the guy who runs your shop has to increase his price whenever he's paying more. Like it's just Husto, please, for the love of God, anything but the Rothschilds. He hasn't increased prices. No, he has once in the last year and a half. I know, which is no, I know because com- I pay that comparatively increase. has been, and I'm more fortunate than some. Yeah. But it's still at the same time. It's funny because I took boxes in to Tom yesterday at work, and like he was so fucking excited. Yeah, he was. But but it's funny because he's working on. He's like, "Yo, I made these boxes like this. I'm, I made this prototype box. It's really cool. It's a slide lid box and shit." He's like, "You know, I'm thinking of making you a humidor." And I'm like, "Tom, I've been giving you." boxes for a year now that are slide top fucking cigar boxes so yeah. like this is not groundbreaking fucking yeah, this science is a thing bud and i said there's a difference between a box and a humidor yeah. like there's no seal on that that's gonna be no bueno yeah buddy. that's not gonna like, work like if you want to make it for fucking long-term cigar storage and shit well i want to do it for a few i'm like yeah you're gonna not be good for very long yeah, you know a couple weeks maybe and then after that you're fucking shot like you got to do like a real seal and shit but uh, I brought in these boxes for him. He's, like, so excited. And I'm like, this is just, like, the last two or three months because there's only four boxes. <laughs> you know what? I got some uh, some scraps of the uh, Spanish cedar and the uh, yeah. sniper mahogany from oh, the yeah. shelves. He wants it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get I'll get those over mm-hmm. to you. I, I didn't even think about that till right now. Speaking of which, talk for a second. Okay. I can do that. You're going to miss out on it. No. Um, so the shop went well this week. I got paint pretty much up mm. everywhere. Like almost, so the conference room just got its first coat of putty, but other than that, everything else is putty that needs puttied. Uh, final coats are going up tomorrow on everything except for the conference room, and hoping to have the whole thing painted. Right now, I got the majority of it painted by like, what the hell are you doing? You're making all kinds of noise. I and was shit. looking for the one box. That one. Because there's many boxes. The one box to okay. rule them all. That's right. One box to no. rule them all. Uh, what no, box to unite then? The shop is like so. I had a great day today, even though I didn't. So I had like five different things that I was working on that, like, oh, I need this part before I can move any farther. Okay, so I moved to this job, did that. And like, I moved through them, and then Joe finished up everything that I had for him today. And he's like, hey, what do you want me to do next? And I was like, bro, there's nothing for you to do. And he's like, wait, what? I'm like, there's, I actually don't have anything for you to do. Like, everything that's left to do is like, I have to figure out what it is I'm doing as I do it, mm. like running power to like the shelves and stuff. So like I have to do it because I don't know what the whole plan is because I no. don't. I have to like adapt <clears throat> as I go. Are you doing the work? All of it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's he's so you, done ninety percent of everything for the show. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're everything doing other the than the, the yeah the yeah carpentry I mean, and yeah I was maintenance my whole life. I've been fixing things my different time. variations. That's so. awesome. Yeah. It, well. It sucks. I would have rather paid somebody t- to do it, but my shelves doubled in price, and that took my entire construction budget. So I did it myself. So if you're wondering why he's looking for the box, because since a couple weeks ago, I feel like if he doesn't get anything else, the intern should get something. Yeah, I get yeah. So here is your very own oh. Tom's Penworks original cigar box pen. That is that is a beautiful piece of. And piece now of you artwork. can you can. Uh, 
carry it around at work with pride or you could just dude mine's absolutely destroyed i fucking uh i showed mine to him yesterday because i was handing him the boxes at shift change and so fucking ebling the day guy uh for the warehouse was in there he's like what the fuck are you guys doing i was like oh he makes i was like oh shit i pulled it out of my pocket i'm like he makes these but look at the wear on that motherfucker particularly around the clip yeah. because that pen is not meant to be carried in right. your, it's your meant jean to be right pocket. here yes. and that's it where it just gets this right. movement and that's all Dude, that thing is, I am Tom's official, like, test dummy. You know what, like, though, dude? I beat the fuck look out at of the, his pants. Look at the epoxy on it, though, yeah, or, yeah. or shellac or whatever he uses. Like, it's fan. It's amazing. Other than when how, the clips dug how in. How so, Chris? She said you just pulled a cha-chinga. Cha-ching! You talking just being a giving bastard? <laughs> yeah, baby. No. That's a little lot. Yeah. No, it wasn't That's bad. That it back bad. about 10%. Hey, there That's what she, I appreciate about you. No, that's what you appreciate about me, yeah? Mm. No, um, but no. You were talking. You might stop out the shop tomorrow. You really should because right. it's completely. I seen the 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 last video. Yeah, I'll be keeping up on the interwebs. It's, it's even better. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, Is it's, it got a potty yet? Tomorrow. <laughs> well, okay. well. Hit me up when that toilet's the, done. I'll come break the, that motherfucker in. The, the water will be running. I'm gonna roll tomorrow, in so. like Lee Marsh. Stolen thrones. Stolen thrones. I still gotta call him about that. Yo. Boys Company's name's fucking uh, Stolen Throne Cigars. Mm. Awesome, dude. Fucking honorary junkie. One oh, of two. I'm afraid somebody will manage to steal the toilet if I put a sticker on there that says Stolen Throne. Like, somebody's so, going to be like, I'm jacking this I'm toilet. I'm like, yo, we got to fucking get an official sponsorship for the toilet in your joint. And, like, we could just cover it in Stolen Throne Cigar bands. And fucking, it'll be the official seat of Stolen Throne Cigars. Yeah, you could do that. You could, you could put it Stolen Throne Cigar bands all over it and then fucking lacquer it. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, uh, somebody will actually figure out a way to steal the toilet, though. But wouldn't that? Wouldn't that? All you need is the seat. That would like, be such yeah. a good story. Oh like, yeah, so, hundred percent. So, um, tell me that's not a story from your fucking twenties somewhere. Like you and your fucking bro, hooligan oh, ass friends. I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> we never did anything wrong ever. Never, never, never. Nope. Uh, not shit. us, man. <laughs> no. Yeah, we were bad. Yeah. We were terrible. Dude, if my body wasn't so fucking wore out, I would be all about like us doing like a, let's do a junkie's jackass. And no. Just do like, no. No, 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 no. For sure no. not. For God, sure not. No. no. Because I'm my body. That was fucked. my teens and twenties. Yes. Like I, I have broken 100%. almost everything from we're, here up. I'm I'm good. We're gonna try to we're gonna go to like tractor supply and buy one of those little mini bikes with the giant fucking wheels and then try to jump it over a fucking. I already have one. Pool. We've already done that. We actually did it off of my buddy's. I, I'm no, no bullshit. This Sit happened. down, intern. Yeah, this actually happened. So we we bought it for forty five bucks off a guy. Took, forty five dollars. Took took the motor, ripped it out of there, put like a seventy five cc motor on it. Oh they're, my God. they're like a twenty five cc motor normally, mm -hmm. and th this was dual drive front. Both wheels were driven. Oh my God. Yeah, scary as shit. It was a power line bike, so like this thing was terrifying. So we. Carried it up to his bedroom window, handed it up. I got on it and I jumped it off of his roof into his pole. Just we, once. We thought, oh fuck no, no, because he oh, it ran it. after that. Oh dude, there <laughs> thing was bulletproof. Every one of us is mechanics. Okay, like, it didn't okay, matter. Okay. Like you know, just shut it off on the way down. Like you know, you're crashing. Just shut it off on the way down. Boom, a little water in the exhaust pipe. And just dump it out and go back at it. Speaking of things that shouldn't be. And terrifying mechanical okay. items. Who has seen the 2023 Dodge Demon? Mm -mm. No? No. God damn. God damn, son. Honestly, man, when they started making 700 horsepower Durangos, I was like, all right, I'm done. Bro. I got nothing. Like, I don't care anymore. The new Demon for 2023 the srt like i think this is i don't know if they're they're off of it for a while and going to electric i think is what they're doing so they're like ah, everybody thought we were gonna go out quiet but like fuck that shit we took a rail of fucking coke off a hooker's ass and we've come up with the srt 2023 demon 170 this motherfucker 1025 horsepower fucking dumb sets fucking records in every category for a production vehicle. But the fucked up thing is it still can't catch a fucking Tesla. Zero to 60. 1.66 seconds. What? 
That's the same as the plaid. Yeah, that's the same. That's fast as fuck. That's fast as fuck. That's fast as fuck. Yo, that quarter is a mile. Beautiful looking car. Quarter yeah. mile. Look up- Look up the Tesla uh, plaid. plaid Yo, the you know who just got one of those? And see what the speed, the uh, zero to 60 is. I think it's 1.4, 1.6. Amber of the Galaxy Boutique just grabbed a fucking plaid. A plaid? Yeah. Yo, okay, so that's a zero to 60. Quarter mile and 8.9 seconds at 151 miles per hour. Jesus Christ. Yeah. By the way, everything you're telling me, Chris is already putting in the... She, she, she's got it. She's on it. You know what, though? It, as much as the plaid looks amazing. Jeff married good. The plaid looks amazing. But it you will never hear the plaid make that. And, and that's it. There's something about that feeling. You got to appreciate, though, that Dodge, they're coming out with their new fucking electric motors. They're like, we got to find a way to make it loud. Their electric car. That they're doing is fucking loud. Dude, yeah. what was that yeah. Kevin James? Kevin James vent. It's got like a fucking speaker in the back or something. I don't know. They found they the put, way. They put yeah. baseball to cards in the sound. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there, uh, dude. No, there was upper a mo- deck. There yeah. was a movie uh, with Kevin James and Vince Vaughn back in the day, where they were, you know, a private company, and what they did is they made electric or modern cars feel like muscle cars. That's what mm. they did. So, like, yeah, the power is there, but nobody wants it. They want the muscle car. So they, they would put speakers throughout the car, and they would do certain things. And, like, they did all this programming and shit. That, that was the whole movie was about doing exactly that, making it feel like a muscle car. Putting servos in the engine in the engine casings. To so, shake the shit up. Yeah, yeah. so, so and it, no, and it torques. Did. Yeah. No, it, it, they did it in the suspension in the movie. Okay, they yeah. They would actually, like, torque the, the car. They used the um, dynamic fluid that Cadillac had. Because that's, uh, like... <sighs> One time I got to drive a really nice car. A lawyer friend of mine was test driving a 911 Turbo. Yeah. And I was like, I was in my early 20s. And I was like, dude, the the Porsche 911 is my favorite car. And do you own driving gloves? I don't. Really? No. We can get them hooked up with Ian. (laughs) But uh, like I said, the 911 is my favorite car. And he was like weekend test driving this because... You yeah. don't you don't go out in afternoon test drive a high end right. car. You don't drive it for a mile and a half and come back and say, Yeah, I like it or I don't. Yeah, they give it to you for a weekend. So and I'm talking to him and I'm like, Ray, uh, I saw the the Porsche sitting in your driveway. I said, Did you buy it? And he's like, No, I'm test driving it. And I said, Oh, that sucks, man. I said, I would have really liked I said, Are you going to buy it? And he's like, No, it's too much car for me. And I was like, Oh man, I really would have liked to have driven it. And he fucking tosses me the keys and he was like, Go ahead. And I said, what and he goes yeah go. your silly sauce oh, got bigger oh, dude <laughs> i had to, i had to i had to make i could not walk through that doorway sideways i had to i had to make sure i got it straight on but uh dude like and it was a standard and i got down on the industrial park road and i come into first gear around that corner and i hit it down into second and the whole fucking ass end of it swung around and i'm like this i was born for this oh it was it was amazing just <laughs> down that fucking road in this porsche i was like if i wrecked this i'm fucking dead dude i had a buddy worked at a garage i won't name and they would call me in like when their guys couldn't figure something out my buddy would call me like hey can you stop down just see if you take a look like yeah so i come down i think you know kick me a little bit it's nice right how much do emts make he's not an emt bud no no hey ryan i love you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for those who who don't know ryan seneca just chimed in with uh the fact that he was seconds away from buying a maserati last year to which i i also got a silly sausage in my pants i was like <laughs> hey you know fucking i could swing uh so he had me come down and i get there and i'm like what's up and he's like all right i need you to test drive this car and tell me what you think okay he's like i'm going with you okay i'm like which car he's like the ctsv Oh, was like the previous a, production yeah. fucking record setter. 2010 My dad 2011. Had one, yeah. So he's like, all right, we need to go out here, get on 79 to do this test drive. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean I got to get on the freeway for the test drive? He's like, you need to get on the freeway. Mm-hmm. For the record, crazy as shit is, Corvette motor in a Cadillac, mm-hmm. faster than the Corvette. Yeah. Because, Weird. Well, no, they actually, they weren't worried about style as much as they were actual aerodynamics and... Again, that same suspension I was talking about with dynamic fluid. So, like, as you would uh, accelerate, the fluid was adaptive fluid in the shock. So, it would sink. And it wasn't like the springs sh- shrunk. It was a magnetic. 
Is it magnetic shit? Yeah, they, like, uh, they use his yeah. uh, magnetic resonance to control it. Yeah, GM uses that in their trucks. So he's like, all right, here's the customer complaint. Maglev. None of my guys will drive the car to find out what it's doing. I'm like, you have a garage with 25 mechanics. He's like, I know. <laughs> he's guys, like, I need the guy that dropped, jumped off the fucking roof into the pool. He goes, <laughs> the customer complaint is between five and 6,000 RPMs when he shifts from fifth to sixth. Oh, damn. He hears a clunk. Oh and I went, <laughs> bro, I've never driven this car. He's like, we can be out as long as we need to. He's like, it needs fixed. <laughs> I was like, the, the customer's like, when I'm getting after it. No, on this episode that, of the that's, Cigar Monkey Garage. He dropped it. So the guy had his assistant drop it off with a note. So they don't even know. Like, it just says between 5,000 and 6,000 when I shift from fifth to sixth, I hear a clunking noise from the transmission. My fucker didn't have a dyno. Right? <laughs> so I get on 79, and I'm like, well, bro, there's not, there's nowhere I'm going to be able to do this, even on 79. Mm. This is like 8 o'clock at night. And he's like, you'll be good. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, I, I said, ain't got enough room. nowhere long I enough for enough, me to get. I don't have enough road to get up to 88 miles per hour. I, th- I was like, bro, it's going to be like, I'm going to be at like 170, 180 in this car. Oh, yeah. Doing this. And he goes, yeah, that's why you're fucking here. Uh, okay. So I bang it from fifth to sixth. And you skills. hear this click. It's not a bang. It's just this little. And I was like, bro fucking pulled over i was like call a fucking tow truck he's like why wow. i'm like the fucking servo just came off in the tranny he's like what i see he their shit broke loose in the tranny they pulled the tranny out and uh one of the actual there's an electric servo for the uh-huh. shift shift mechanism the fucking servo snapped off inside and I, I don't know how i heard it but it just you just heard it tap the casing when it went to shift and you could feel that slug like every other gear when it would bang it would fucking whack like it, it hit oh, yeah. hard as fuck every time i hit that one and it just went wham it's like okay that's not right and i you know trying to figure out what it was i pulled over tow truck he's like you didn't want to drive it back i'm like fuck no i don't want to drive dude i was terrified by the yeah. time i was done i i didn't i never want to drive fast again like that <laughs> that ruined the car because like it's not fun yeah like, it's I, fucking I, like, terrifying bro if you're into like into it good for you I did my adrenaline shit in my teens. Yeah. I'm good. I'm covered. Like That I, shit's I've for jumped... like the roadways that have been swept free of rocks right. that could and send you into the fucking stratosphere and shit. Oh, you're in southwestern Pennsylvania. Could you yeah. imagine if a deer walked out in front of you while you were doing that? That's some shit from Texas, bro. The, the most common complaint that he got at his shop. Like he would get at least a dozen or two complaints a week from customers that their car was doing this, like down the road. And every time he'd say, hey, don't waste your money on diagnostics. Where does this happen? Oh, on 79. Exactly. <laughs> Why? It's the, the fucking, fucking road. road. Yeah. He's like, it doesn't matter how well built the car is. There's fucking like four inch transitions in that road. Like right. there's nothing you could do about that. And the customers would return the cars hey. thinking that it was something wrong with the car. And it's like. So you guys, I think, matter. I think both you guys know some people with money. I don't like my whole life. Right. Like actually for the since i got into the oil field i've essentially made more money than most people in my in my bubble right so my buddy mike lives in arguably like the least valuable shittiest house in upper st Clair. like you go down the four couch road and make a left down there and there's like power lines and shit and yeah. like his place is back in there it's like this weird fucking shit it, the, I actually know what you're talking about they built the house against the property line so it's got like a triangular kitchen <laughs> it, it is it dude is weird but his his neighbor owns some decking company over here motherfucker's got all, all kinds of money right and like he's got a house four times bigger than ours for his swimming pool yeah he's got like a a pool house Mm. like fresh prince of bel-air style shit and so like we're i'm over there hanging out with him one time and he's like hey man go get he's got a side by side he's gonna let us use it to we're cut he's cutting up trees he's like he's gonna let us use it to to bar to move the firewood Mm. go get it so all right i go up and i'm like yo man he told me to come get this shit he's like all right he's like have you ever driven one of these before i was like no i'm kind of like it's cool you know like i've never driven a side-by-side and shit like i'm 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 jacked he's like 
All right. Well, before you go trucking around for some stupid shit, like go open it up, have some fun, like drive up the they're they're on a, yeah. like a private road, go up over the railroad tracks and drive it up the hill. And I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah, man, fucking here you go, have fun. He says, just do me a favor. I says, what? He says, if you roll it over, keep your arms inside. Yep. <laughs> That's it. What kind of fucking money do you have where you're just like, no, 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 it's cool fucking Bro, if you no, were no, designed no, to do that. They're literally know. made for it. I don't know. I don't know. He's like, I don't give a shit about this fucking $30,000 vehicle that's like a toy that you're going to go drive. Just like, don't break do you your shit. you know the number one injury on a side-by-side? Oh, is? I'm sure it's the broken fucking arms. arms. Nope. Yeah. Broken thumbs. Broken oh, thumbs. Steering? People don't buy the steering dampener, and they grab their steering wheel like they would normally, mm-hmm. and it it hits a, a log or something and it spins real fast uh, and the cogs that hold the wheel on snap people's thumbs dude i'm just and blinking at this it fucking hurts he's like yeah just just if you roll it over don't don't <laughs> fucking it back. keep keep your arms inside I'll, and i was I'll, like i'll stick to my honda 400 i'm like can we be they're amazing can the we side be by sides are friends amazing. The 400s are amazing don't get me wrong but like side by sides are i like awesome. to be friends with this guy <laughs> like we went one time i think his kid had a graduation party at their fucking place Right, and he's got a bar on his deck that's inside of his gazebo that he built because he's a fucking deck guy. And they brought in fucking the ex penguin Ken Reggett, Kenny Reggett, the okay, goalie. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's a celebrity guest bartender. And Kenny Reggett was fucking serving drinks out of the fucking bar on his deck. Wow, I'm like the fucking hell is, and you've got like simultaneously all this money, and then across the street you got this dude that's got like. Like he won't even have the gas turned on. He's like burning. But that dude doesn't look wind. down on him. That's no, the no, fucking cool, cool part. Fuck, That's man. what I like. Like, and then you got Mike. He's just like the most white trash ass motherfucker that you could put in this neighborhood. That drags out all his amplifiers and shit <laughs> on the fucking <laughs> deck anytime it gets warm and turns that shit up to eleven and was like, "You want to come over and jam?" And I'm like, "Yes." And these motherfuckers ain't trying to sleep. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, but but guys like that, the reason that they don't look down on anybody, they made their money with their back. Mm, but like, even if they fair. didn't, like, there's there's good people. You know, I made mine from in, the back. in all industries, right? So like, probably the biggest douchebag millionaire I've ever met was a guy that worked his way up from nothing. Mm. Because he was just like, fuck you, I'm better than everybody because I did it. Well, I fucking can't. Yeah, and I feel like I, I could be that guy. I, but like, I clawed my way up the goddamn yeah, ladder. Yeah, and it's like, okay, calm down, man. Like, you're still just a person. Like, I feel like the people that end up being, like, multi-millionaires are the people that are like, yeah, I did it. Yeah. Here, here's how. Let me let me talk to you. Let me help you. And, like, they they, they, they make a good network of people. And, like, Some they, they help bitches. people. Yeah. Like exactly. Right, not like, that he's a millionaire, but, but the, like that kind of dude is like, yeah. here, here, help, let me help you get. Yeah, I mean, I, so my original plan was to open a shop, definitely within his, within his radius of like his shop, like, mm-hmm. like, closer than I am to anybody else now, and I would have taken some of his core demographic. I told him, like, hey, this, you know, I was thinking about doing this, and then before, because I, I went to buy the building, I showed you pictures of the building mm-hmm. when I was looking at that one, and it was laid out nice, and he's like, dude, that's a good place for it. He's like. Yeah, we'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, that's a good play. And like, that was it. Like, it, the hesitancy was that long. It was a couple seconds of like, you know what? Yeah, he'll be a competitor, but it's fine. Like, if you're trying to help people, you know, the bon contra is the same way. Like, you could read people too, though. You know what I mean? It's like fucking no, you're you're okay. Like, we're we'll help each other and like yeah, you know, shit like that. Like, I'm you're not gonna to get hurt stuff another shop like from yeah. Dave. You know, yeah. So some sometimes, yeah, maybe I. I steal your customer, but I'm buying the cigars from you before I sell them to him. So you're still fucking right. in there. And, and like, yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of different ways. Like it can all work sure. out, but like, but even like, you know, the Bonacontros, they're not, they're not in my radius really. Yeah. But they also bought a cigar shop because it was easier than building their own private cigar club. Right. Like those <laughs> motherfuckers, d- dude, these are the most they like, fucking coolest Nicest people. people yeah. Dude. But like, just, if just you were lucky about, like, and you get like, if you get promoted, and the junkies get invited to the 4th of July. I won't do a 4th of July party for the rest of my life. Yeah. Because they made me feel so emasculated. Oh, dude. With their 4th of you've July never party. Seen, you've never seen fireworks like this. I know that you've never seen fireworks like this. No. Dude, their shit. Pallets. What, 45 minutes? Wow. Pallets. Sam, wow. I, I, work I, with me on the timeline. 45 minutes, you'd say? It, yeah, right around okay. there. Imagine the Pittsburgh downtown finale of fireworks Mm -hmm. for 45 minutes that's it just the finale the whole dude there was never a fucking break it's just as soon as it started there was never less than three things in the air their hillside was on fire yeah (laughs) 
This it, shit is fucking it was crazy. Wild. There was awesome. one their their home bar. They paid two bartenders from the place next to their cigar shop to come fucking work the bar. And like we we're there and someone was there in the beginning. It was like they can have anything they want except for this bottle. Everything's free. All you got to do is tip them. There's a fucking fish bowl on the bar this big, and it was fucking stacked. I yeah, didn't see a, money. I didn't ever... see a single one dollar bill in that fucking mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, dude, they paid uh, Sam Wasia to come out and fucking roll handmade cigars and give them away for the event. Yep. Our buddy Evan to come out and play the fucking music. They did not like somebody was working a grill, but they mm-hmm. paid caterers to come out and fucking cater the event and shit. I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers, because. You've been to one of mine. My shit ramped up really high before I went over to their shit. And, like, I'm not trying to, like, throw them out in the fucking field and be like, oh, these people are fucking... They, they're so fucking down to earth and cool. Yeah, they're the nicest. But their shit blew mine away by a hundred times. And oh. they were chilling the whole time, walking around, fucking hanging out with people because it was like, oh, no, we'll get somebody else. To do. Like, we're going to hang out. This is our day. Yeah. I was yeah. like, yo... That shit fucking killed me for fucking weeks beforehand and afterwards, the lead up, the build up, all the fucking work I had to put into doing that fucking shit. And then the, like two days afterwards of cleaning up and these motherfuckers are chilling. I'm like, I can't ever do mine again. Like, I would feel like the biggest idiot in the world if I ever tried to fucking do a, like another Fourth of July party. It's basically bottle rockets compared to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Like, like. Anything I could do would just be like, you know, shooting a couple of bottle rockets off compared right. to Pittsburgh. That's anything any of us could do. Each shit, the three of us combined, if we pulled our money, would be like bottle rockets compared to the city of Pittsburgh. And theirs was the city of Pittsburgh is bottle rockets compared to theirs. And they barely knew us. They were just like, fucking, we, we came met, over and like one did, time because we did the show. did the show there. And she was like, hey, man, like you guys should come out. And I was like, yeah, all right. I, I got in trouble with the cops last year. So my wife don't want me to do it again anyhow. So I was like, yeah, OK, cool. I'm like. Yeah. Holy shit, dude! They're they're so so fucking cool. They man. probably have the cheapest so police nice. at the at the place. They so they made all their money as far as I know. They have a tree service company, I'm like a really good successful one, right? And like, you know, I I hit them up the one time because my mother in law had like a tree that partially came down in the backyard, and they're like, yeah, no, we'll give it to you for this price. I'm like, you sure? They're like, yeah, like did it cheap as fuck. Came out, took care of the whole thing. Like they're so sweet. They're nice people. Very cool. You'll like. Yeah, them. they're they're yeah, salt of the earth. And that's uh tomorrow. Hopefully you can make it out at least. Yeah, I, I can't cool. make it out, but hopefully you can make it out. We'll see what we'll happens, but I, I think so. Probably for a little while anyway. So what do you guys think of the uh, Christoph Maduro? Oh, I fucking love it. It's not a bad time, sir. It's not yes. a bad time. If it's I was going to go wrong, anyway. not as strong as I thought it was going to be. No, you need the piss off. That I, I feel like people automatically see the dark rapper and mm-hmm. think they're strong. Mm-hmm. That's not how that works. Mm-hmm. That has very little to do with it. It's it's got a very nice earthy flavor yeah. to it. I like it a lot. This is my this is my jam right here. Yeah, yeah, nice for sure. So normally I would just hold out, but we're having a good show. I don't feel like fucking derailing it. So we're gonna switch to the intern cam, and we're gonna make the intern read off the events for the week Fuck while I hey. use the potty. Hell yeah! He's like, yeah, I would have watched. Hey, I get to read. do something. Yay! All right, the events this week are Thursday, April thirteenth. Uh, San Pirelli. Close enough. Yeah, good enough. Uh, at the Blind Fox, uh, join us for special tasting event featuring the ultra premium Sans Pirelli line of cigars and Glenn Farkless 25 Scotch. Yeah, 25 year Scotch. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. This is not a private event, but uh, tickets will be required to participate. Tickets are $40 and include a San Pirelli cigar uh, of your choice. And a pour of the Glen Far Glen Farkless. Glen Farkless. Le- yeah. Uh, twenty five year. Twenty five year. Only twenty tickets are available. Uh dress attire is suggested, but not required. I will say if you <coughs> know anything about these cigars, which you don't. Right. Forty dollars covers the cost of maybe one of their cigars. Oh, no kidding. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, they're they're uh, I've never had one, but from what I understand, they're ultra premium, so they're they're really proud of their shit. So, so the the takeaway here is it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think if you want to try a Sam Perel, Perel, I think is I, I don't know. I'm not sure how you say it, but Perel. Um, 
this is a place to do it. You're going to go down there and you're going to get a 25 year scotch and a cigar for the cost of what the cigar should be. So if you're a deal seeker, this is a good deal. And Blind Fox is awesome. Probably good company. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's good people down there. Bill's always awesome, too. Okay. Friday, April 14th at Cigaro. It's the Sinestro event. Sinestro. With Coleman Fine. Stop by and meet the man himself and take advantage of the deals. I don't know any more details on that. So I got nothing because Corey's not here. Oh, well, uh, maybe we can ask him when he gets back. Yeah, I don't know anything else about it. And Sunday, April A. Hey, what do you know about uh, Cigar Sinistro? The Sinistro event, yeah. What do I know? Yeah, do you know anything about it? Uh, it not much. I think it's just uh, Coleman's going to be out. And okay. like, I think I made up the fact that there would be deals because I don't know that there are, but if there's an event, usually there are. So if there aren't, tell him Corey said, give me a fucking deal. I like it. Yeah. Because if not, it. what the fuck are you there for? You know They'll what I mean? They'll honor it. That's All right, small, lastly, bro. Sunday, April 29th, Pittsburgh Pipe Show at Nelson Lagusto's Greensburg. Nelson Lagusto Cigar is excited to announce uh, that we'll be working, excited to announce that we'll be working with the fabulous people of, there was a typo in there, uh, La Dissi, La, La Dissi, the host of the 2023 La Dissi Pittsburgh Pipe Show, the ultimate pipe event you do not want to miss. Uh, be sure to share this page with all of your pipe, sm pipe smoking friends and family members. I bet you got all kind of pipe smoking friends, don't you? I've got, uh, yeah. I've got lots of pipe smoking friends. It's funny when it happens to somebody else. When you have to read off that sheet, it's not as easy as you think it would be. You know, well, you're like, I've read shit before. Like, yeah. I could fucking read. But when there's a camera pointed at you and a microphone yeah. in your fucking face, it's a little different story, it, isn't it? Right. You're reading it out loud and you're trying not to sound like an idiot and stumble all over oh, yourself. And you're yeah. like, uh, pip, 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 So when I'm holding that shit and y'all are watching me fucking read it and going, oh, you fucking idiot. You fucked that up. Like, yeah, it's not so much fun whenever uh, the shoe's on the other foot. Uh, Sam's handed me shoes. this. We've got the April Fool's question mark exclamation question t exclamation times 100. Uh, this is going to be Saturday, April the 1st from 9 to 9. This is going to be the smoke uh, second anniversary event uh, for the Bonnet Contras. Uh, so it's customer appreciation day. And here is the lineup. 9 a.m. complimentary breakfast with Mimosa Power Tower. 1130 sign up for the quickest smoke competition see store for details yo that's gonna be a fucking time the bro. quickest smoke competition yeah how fast you can smoke this fucking you're like <sighs> not that cigar the woody mm. we've showed you the woody mm. and it, we've look it up the woody by oscar veladares this cigar is like four times the size of a the cigar you're smoking right now it's like a hundred and something gauge cigar. It's a oh base. It's a fucking baseball bat, dude. It is fucking terror. There's going to be that's a, <laughs> that's the worst <laughs> event they could do. Shit. There's going to be all kinds of vomiting happening at that event. I can what almost promise the... you. Did you just read it all. I'm I'm getting. I'm we're oh, working yeah. through. That's dude. not that, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. And you're stretched out. That'd be big even for you. They you don't know do what I mean. Any... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so that's the quickest smoke competition. Uh, so the way that's going to work, actually, is you get $60 plus tax for the purchase, plus 20 cash only for the entry fee. A winner takes all. Yeah. Yeah. And it's then, just going to be crazy. And the crowd that they're going to pack in there? Oh, dude. Maybe not a bad contest. It's going to be fucking smoke. You're not going to be able to see when you walk in the fucking dude, door. that place, I, they, yeah. their air handling is fantastic. Yeah, though. but that, that's a lot of woodies. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, on the initial light up, it's going to be tough, but after that, it'll be fine. 3 p.m., you got the Pens versus the Bruins. Get to sit down and watch the <laughs> hockey game for why not. 5 p.m., com complimentary dinner provided by the Bulldog Pub. Uh, six. This is a super specific time. 6.09 p.m., <laughs> right? The NCAA Men's Final Four, Florida uh, Atlantic versus San Diego State. Uh, then at 8.49, you have the NCAA Men's Final Four, Miami versus UConn. Uh, the large raffle basket valued at approximately five hundred dollars at twenty a ticket. Three small raffle baskets valued valued at two fifty ten a ticket, uh, and a winner to be drawn at nine p.m. Winner does not have to be present. And <laughs> wants to say down at the bottom. This this phone is so awkward. Yeah, you get Jesus, used and it keeps zooming out on me. Two year traditional anniversary gift is cotton. Twenty percent of all cotton. 
cotton. Wait, twenty percent off all cotton merchandise. How much cotton do they have? I'm thinking maybe clothing. Yeah, I like would imagine, maybe, right? I don't know. Something along those lines. I, dude, I'd be so jacked if there was something interesting, like a fucking stuffed silly sausage or something. That's right, cotton. <laughs> twenty per. I understood that reference. Twenty percent off all cotton merchandise and complimentary cotton candy cocktails. Yo, that sounds like a party. Right. Snacks and beverages available all day. Here's your awkward phone back, sir. With the weird fucking hinge on the side and the fucking tooth. It's a screen. phablet, okay? It's a phablet. That is a fucking fallacy. So Ryan said quickest smoke equals three and a half hours. Oh, dude. It, oh, that's yeah. going to be a fucking yeah. rough time. Now, I was going to say three, three and a half hours is probably, I don't know. The Woody is not a heavy cigar. Like it weighs the same as this. It's not heavy. It's real light, loose. You would, it, you would it, have to be loosely packed to yeah. be able to draw it a score. Yeah, that twenty-two oh, yeah, inches for long. Sure. That motherfucker is a uh, Native American peace pipe. <laughs> and that's fucking that huge. I think my favorite comment is Chris laughing at herself. These these guys are gonna have to get their hi, tongues. honey. By the way, Shannon's watching. Oh, I tell, know Chris said hi to her earlier, but I didn't. Know if that. Shannon's watching, she needs to tell Jen to get to open this podcast up on her phone too. Why are you flickering? I, because I'm Italian and I like to gesticulate. I like as much as it. No, never mind. But anyhow, like yeah. after you smoke that Woody, you're gonna have to get your fucking tongue shaved. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I gotta I'm find. I gotta find the picture of Fred because oh, it's the it's the best Woody picture ever. And it's like the person that would make this cigar look as small as it could possibly. Yeah. Make. He's a huge human. This being. motherfucker's head mammoth. is two of yours. Yeah, like he's no, got all no bullshit. Of... His head is like yeah. Big. Like he's he's a mammoth human being. Yeah, you heard about Trey and his five head fetish. If fucking that dude, Oof. <laughs> so much head. There. So Bo Katan. What does everybody want? He- head. Yes. Okay. What is it? You remember? No. 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 Al Snow. WWF. Oh yeah. What does everybody want? Head. What does everybody need? Head. I, I met Al Snow at a at an ECW event. Well then, what the fuck? You should have been on top of that. I should have been. You should have. Sandman spit beer yeah. on me. Yeah. Fucking yeah, Ryan said it. Couldn't, he understood that reference. I have this no one's idea for you, buddy. who Al Snow is. I understood that reference. He's a ref. He was a, a, he was a he was a wrestler in the WWF. Oh yeah, we've and he would wrestling. take a mannequin head, uh, in the beginning of the show with him, and he had there was something written on the back of the fu- backwards on the forehead of the mannequin. I don't remember that. I was well, you should school, be looking man. it up, intern. There was something written backwards. I don't remember what it was, but that was the, that was the, his gimmick. Is he would hold up the fucking mannequin head, and it would say, "What you know? He, what does everybody want?" And he'd hold up the head. Head. <laughs> oh, yeah, but the funny, funny thing was, as, as terrible as like Jake the Snake Roberts was and Hacksaw Jim Duggan with the two by four. Oh, shit, that helped me written on it. Helped me backwards. Yep. And fucking, but Al Snow would like wait till the ref's head was turned and pulled out this mannequin's head and hit somebody in the head with it. And it's like that thing's made of styrofoam. <laughs> Like that's not <laughs> like it's not yeah. catastrophic. Here, like bud. as fake as this fucking shit is, dude. That is the fakest fake. That's terrible yeah. fake. That is faker than but all I mean, my. From Never mind. Uh, hey, uh, I actually have the uh, Fourth of July thing just came up while I was looking for Fred on here. What I've, does everybody want? Fred. Oh. No. no hey, see no what Fred. I did there? We'll connect no, the dots. No Fred the head. Dots you I sees. So my uh-huh. my wife and her siblings have a stone head. It's about this big. It weighs about 150 pounds. Mm. And they randomly drop at each other's houses. That's so a compliment like, that he doesn't need there, uh, Chris. <laughs> right. It, no, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly what, he what he wants to be. To be. Yeah. He so, came in. He was like, yo, man. He, wanna, he was drunk as fuck. I want to be. And he was like, be you, your shit's good shit. I'd like to be involved, but I don't want to be on a, like, I just want to push the buttons. I just want to be your Jamie. And I'm like, like Lannister? He's like, no, like Jamie from like the fucking... The what's it show? Joe, Joe Rogan. Podcast. Yeah, I'm like, I don't watch that shit. And he's like, no, he's the guy that just like pushes the buttons. I'm like, you mean like the guy in the chair from Spider Man? Yeah. I'm like, all right. So just say no. Like we. Yeah. I have intentionally avoided the Joe Rogan show, just because I don't want to be accused of ripping him off. I like, feel like we, you should watch it though, because it's actually like here's good the thing. I catch, and stuff. I, yeah. I catch some reels. Mm-hmm. Right, like some of the thirty second clips of interviews and shit. I'm like, I'm down with it or whatever, but I do not like actively listen. Joe Rogan is regardless of what you think of him as as a public figure or whatever, Nothing. he is an incredible interviewer. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, I mean that that's where fucking Howard Stern shines, right? Like you just ask some yeah. shit that fucking nobody else asks. 
And like to be fair, like to, to be, be fair. fair, I feel like like we do that with with our our, our cigar in Italy. You know what, what I mean? The fuck? It's it. You know what? <laughs> is this, this the Woody? Is, <laughs> this is kind of morbid, but but it almost looks like he's putting a shotgun in his mouth. Right, dude. He had he. <gasps> He's like this. Oh, somebody get me Oscar Valadares. The next one, the double barrel. No, I feel like that's going to be it. Come on. It's going to be a CAO. It'd right, be so let's, fucking let's see good. see if I can get it. Can get Just it. band two of them together, the fucking double. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's, it's all kinds of long. Yeah. I've never actually heard that before. <laughs> the second time I've been emasculated on this show today. <laughs> Chris said, young Jamie. And then uh, she said, Corey, you're no Joe Rogan. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not ripping off anybody. You're both bald. I, uh, I mean, yeah. that's, that's... To be... F- to I, I want to say it again. To be, God damn it. To be... <laughs> to be <laughs> gotcha. To me. To me. To be reasonable, I mean, you're here, Chris. You know, so I, I don't know what you want from us, but, like, you're here. You're you're checking out our shit. You know, you get, you're, get your name mentioned on that show? I doubt it. I wonder if she... Listens to Rogan. I, I, I know. Mean, I, I know Scales she, does, but she might. She would well, then by proxy, right? Like she's in his fucking jeep, and then it's just like, oh, really? Uh, I'm stuck with it's one of those things. Um, no, I mean, I, I'm not comparing. Like the the thing that that I'm throwing back to is actually it was Earl. It was like when we first started up the show. He's like, hey, you guys kind of like have a similar vibe going on. I'm like, oh, okay. I know that dude's we pretty successful. Too, like I'm down with that. Speaking shit. Of which, like I'll Earl is here, but he's commentating <gasps> in a different. Uh, commenting in a different chat okay so i'm getting notifications so we got different of... chats as those well, it's weird that's the thing when i share Maybe... it doesn't put everybody's comments in here so like if you're not getting love go to the cigar junkies page and log into here this, the cigar junkies comment. facebook group yeah. is the one that you want to be in um, because there is the page there is the group and then there's everything else yeah. everywhere else we so share I, out I, always, I always go back after the show and i spend like a half hour just like going through all the places I shared it to see who commented that, like, we didn't know that they commented. And I usually send them a message be like, hey, next time, stop by and see us. Yeah. You know, we'll give you a shout out. Jump into the Facebook group because, you know, it's like a group hug. We you have know more what I mean? Fun you there. jump in. For sure. And, like, that's the bestest fucking part. Mm-hmm. But for the people that are in the chat, Ryan, Chris, I'm looking at you, uh, particularly because you've been the most active well, just to say scales because both Scalesies. scales are there. Like they're, they're watching I ain't on... seen that one. Good looking Jeff ain't showing on me. So. No, she said he's here with, like they're uh, watching on one device. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm just going to give her the love. I ain't scared of him. All right, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I wouldn't know. Like, I, I feel he, we get so little fucking feedback on this show. We really do. Like, we yeah. ask for it all the time. Just Nobody's guess. ever like, oh, no, this is stupid. Like, this was great. Nothing. It's just like, oh, we like it. You know, I feel like this is a great show. Oh, we're having fun. Yeah. I mean, I that's like what matters. It's an absolutely good time. And, and maybe it's more so for the people in the chat room than it is for the people in the podcast. But, like, guess what? We've given you an option since day one. If you got something to say, let us know how we're doing. Yeah, let I mean, us know what you like and don't. And Hit you don't up. have to see us here. Yeah. See. If it's not the Facebook group, let us know on uh, the cigar junkies at gmail.com. You or can hit, always. Or hit us up it. on Instagram. Yeah. I, 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 I don't even know how to get there. Don't, we, we, it's a thing. Yeah, I'm old. No, it happens. So. I think we have a Twitter too. I don't think I've ever checked it. We could we could get like a little overlay that sits down in in the corner, or something that'll have the socials in it and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll yeah. find out whenever you actually start doing some shit. You can right. get appreciate involved. it, Corey. We'll, we'll have or, some meetings, Chris. <gasps> so I was reading. Oh, comment Chris, I Chris, I'm it. okay. I thought you were fucking giving. You called the intern, Corey. I was like really heartbroken for a second. Huh. Like if I'm up on that level, I'm I'm doing okay. By I feel way, pretty good about scales. It, you know I, I mean? kind of wore the shirt for you. And uh-huh. for Seth Jones. Yo, it's the first time in a long time you ain't representing. I didn't even realize. I it. didn't have any clean. Damn. And like, I actually sniff tested the one. I, I was like, gave this you ain't some happened. shirts. You could even wear the green one. This is like the last opportunity for the green one for the year. Okay, so I have a confession. That uh, one is clean. But I'm not doing another fucking green cigar. Yeah, that's fair. I wasn't wearing that shirt. Like, I'll, I might wear it next week. Yeah. But I had none of the none of them. You're like, clean. I don't even want to see green. I don't. I want nothing <laughs> to do with it at <laughs> all right now. Like, it was you could grab much. something out of the box. I was like. Well, no, but the, but like this is my pink my cigar shirt. Did I give you a shirt? I have one of the green ones. Yeah, some motherfuckers like I you give bro, and you both shirts bro. and you're not even represented. Bro. It's fucked up. Uh-oh. Having three on the show is nice. All right, right, yeah, right, right. You like my uh, you you like my my Pink Floyd shirt? I I don't even want to go there. I, I yeah, yeah, I'm trying to forget, bro. No, no, it's still, it's no, too soon. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> it's like just too stupid. I don't even want to remember it. You know what I mean? Just get let's just separate. That's all. That's all it is. So uh fucking not a lot of activity in the Facebook group. I keep waiting for 
the week where we have nobody. We still have one. Yeah. So welcome to the group, to Tommy Elledge. And uh, no, no, no trophy this week. People ain't been very Tommy active. Tommy Elledge is the... I think I know who that is. Hold on. Well, while you're looking at that, um, I do want to say, I go back and forth about our group because... A lot of our group members are active on other platforms, which is cool because we're we have some overlap with with other local groups like PCC and PACC for our Pennsylvania pals out yeah. there, um, which is fine. Like I don't need people to be out there all the time, like making it like a constant forum. Like it is supposed to be support for the show, so I'm cool as long as it's centering around interaction with us. I'm hoping once this things chill down for yeah. you again, we, we can, can get, get back to back up. question of the week. Mm-hmm. Sam will have a lot of downtime waiting for customers to come into his shop. There'll be crickets playing in the background. He'll be fucking reaching out like, yo, what's up? There's going to be hours. Like, you, I, to, I hope but, your but, shit's but, busy all the fucking but let, time. Let's be honest for a second. Even if there's downtime, do you, I strike you as the kind of person that's going to just be like, you know what? Let me grab my phone and do this. I, that's, if that's you're my not, thing. Like, then Jason might have to surpass you in the totem pole real fast. I, and know? I understand that. But like, but I, we're outsourcing. I, I got Ryan Seneca. You know, yeah. like, we need to have a meeting. He's spreading the love. I, yeah. Been, yeah. He's I, doing a good job of getting out there. We got to have, like, a team meeting, get everybody together and figure shit out. Once the intern starts to get his bearings, uh, I think that we'll be able to hit it for more of a, you know. Yeah, I do have to say, um, so Tommy Elledge is from, he's a Beyond the Humidor guy. And has crossed oh, okay. over to us. So fuck yeah, Tommy, appreciate you on that. That's I was like, I Thank know you. that I know the name. West he, Coast, and love. he was uh, he was in the chat last week. And then uh, Jason Chapel, Chappelle, oh, Jason Chappelle, Ch- we call yeah, Chappelle. We uh, we've established that that's wrong, but it's how we're yeah, doing it's, it. Anyway. It's what we're doing. But we're he spreads the love mm-hmm. all the time too. Like I see him fuck in other yeah. groups posting stuff for us, and like, hey, I was listening to these guys. Like I really appreciate the stuff you do for us, man. Yeah, I, I don't care about growth. Like, as long as our people keep coming back every week, like, that's the most rewarding shit. Is like, Ryan Seneca was not always here in the chat room, but, like, he quickly became a staple, right? Like, once he came in, it was like, yeah, uh, he's always then he hung around. out. Yeah. And which is really funny, because I initially knew Ryan's name from seeing him in the PCC group, mm-hmm. and then recognizing it when I'd listen to the Cigar Authority and hear the live comments being read on that show, and then being like, oh, Ryan Seneca says. And I'm like, I know that fucking name. I know this name. Yeah. And so it was like, oh, shit. Like... Hey, you know, like we may not be on that same level much as your fucking list that you we were were part of there. One of I don't think we were. I I don't care if you think we're on the same level or not. We are above the cigar authority (laughs) on a top ten list. You you, know what bothers me? Go go ahead and do it uh, right now. Look up uh, because I you know my phone's biased now. Mm -hmm. But look up top ten cigar podcasts. And click on the first result. I will. I will. I will do this live. The right funny now. Here, here's here's why I give that list no clout is because that dude has reached out to us like five times, being like, "Hey, mention it in the comments on your show notes of like, give us a link to this fucking list." And I'm like, I don't know if you need our help. It was the, getting traffic for me. It was the top Google result when I looked it up. Yeah, there you go. So this is, I clicked on the first thing that this yeah. is not we're, we're number nine and authority should be ten if it's still the same as it was. This is the top. I thought it was 15. ten and eleven. Yeah, that's right. Is that what it was? Ten and eleven. Cigar. Snob, I feel like the ash holes. Cigar. Cigar talk number six. Alex Hilliard. Uh, the ash the holes. Phone around. Dude, the ash holes is their sister program that gets like yep. fucking ten percent of number their fucking ten. Cigar yeah. junkies put, podcast. Put it on and turn yeah. that shit around. There, there it is. That's right. There yeah. it is. Turn yep. around. It was the first link. Yeah, blog okay. feed spot. So, and that's why I said it's the first one on Google. If you search top cigar podcasts, look at that. Oh. So, Read read Ryan Seneca because you're the, you're in charge of the oh, chat room. Shit. I gave you your own monitor and everything. Uh, Ryan said, "I think the show is better. TCA is fine, but they're too worried about selling shit, bro." It's I... only because nobody trusts us enough to let us try to sell their shit. <laughs> <laughs> this this show would be an hour and a half of commercials like if somebody would give me some numbers. money. You you wait till you wait till <laughs> I start climbing up the tree of of fucking people trying to get us sponsorships. Yeah. <laughs> I like how it's us already. Alex said, uh, no, upside down like it's backwards. I am completely lost, brother. I the don't... list. I think the list. Oh, oh, all right. Yeah. Fair enough. Although they were number 11. Yeah. So they were number so one. So they're twice. numbers. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, double yeah. number ones. That's right. No, I, Cigar Authority, there's so much knowledge and so much, like, so much wisdom with those it's guys. It's a different vibe. But it's impossible for me to listen to. Like, I zone out. I, I've tried a bunch of times to listen to them, and it's... It's difficult for me to listen to because, like, I listen to the Huberman podcast. I don't know if you've listened to it. 
it's a super technical doctor spewing just like bulk amounts of data at you. But the guy presents it in a way that I can follow along with what he's doing. It's a fitness, more yeah. of a fitness thing. And I can follow along with it because he tells you and then he tells you the application. Then he tells you, he tells you the application. And like, he's like, and now I'm going to tell you about our sponsors for the next minute, which means push it four times and skip yeah. me. Like he, he tells you, like, shit. you know what I mean? Like you can hear, like he's right. telling you what to do in it. Right. And I love it's that. Like, I'm going to take care of money, but what if do you, you mean don't deep listen? in the weeds, Chris? This is where we live. This isn't the weeds. Like, this is home. Um, but no, I, I just like it. It gets me like listening to Cigar Authority. It's every 20 seconds seems like they're putting another ad up and the ads longer than the time that they talk. Like, well, you, you get used the, to it. You could skip through it. They do it in blocks. So there's like only really two breaks or some two or three breaks. Um, so, like, I was good at skipping through that shit. It was fine. They yeah, do and, like their and, and we do our intro and we do our couple of ads and shit. Mm. Here's the thing. Their structure is based on like the idea of even if we're not going to educate you, educate you like there's going to be some educational format to it. Like even with a hey, this is what's going on. Yeah. Whereas we just we're, we're not going to beat them at that game. So our thing is just like, let's fucking have fun and be energetic and let's like, just have fun that's that's it the whole idea was like let's make it a group like we are not the cigar junkies like we are the cigar yeah, junkies the people everybody. in the group like you are the yeah, cigar that's why we started off with what's up junkies because it's right. y'all well uh, like so would, uh, I, the one of the other few podcast companies that i'd listened to is a, a, a small startup to kind of build up called kind of funny okay right and so, like, the idea was there was these four or five guys that started out together. They left IGN to do this thing, and they were like, you know, like, we're all kind of best friends, and if you're listening, you're our best friend, too. So, like, cool. their group is the kind of funny best friends. So they'd be like, oh, this guy chimed in, like, best our best friend fucking Corey Banks out in fucking Pittsburgh, whatever, says this or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's the thing is, like, if you're a part of the group, you're a part of the group. And I really like that mentality and wanted to bring it to the Cigar Podcast. And so, like, that's the idea. Of junkies encapsulates all of us. Yeah. No, I mean, so Alex just said, he's like, yeah, but then you have segments that are sponsored. I don't know if you're talking about us or the Cigar Authority, but, like, for us, it's it's local people that we know. Yeah, so far, like, like it really is, and like, yeah. don't don't get me wrong, like I, if we could get some more, we'll take them. But like, you can skip them. Yeah, you know it, what I mean. You really can. But like he said, the ones that we have on the show, these are friends of ours. These are people we see all the time. Yeah, like just the tip is me. Like Leading House Cigars, Sam went in the Leading House and started working there because he was, mm. it was kind of like an undercover boss thing. Like, like I want to learn about this because I want to open my own place. I want to know how to do it. Can I come in? And Dave took him under his wing. Yeah. And like, I met Dave less than a year before we started doing the show together. We met at Dave's spot. And after episode two, Dave was flying home from Vegas, listening on the plane. And like, sent us a text message and was like hey man i decided i'm gonna sponsor you episode guys. one like uh, i we, think it was after we finished recording episode two yeah that's right and he was he like was listening to i want to sponsor it yeah. so this is episode number 60 that means for 52 episodes or 58 episodes i'm sorry dave has been involved like from the ground yeah. floor of like hey man like i'm gonna give you guys cigars to smoke every week so you're not smoking out of pocket just because like i want to help you guys out yeah and it's been awesome for all parties and he, he said he was talking about them not us but yeah the I, I agree. That's the segments that are sponsored. That the segments themselves can be cool, but like the 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 ads are too long. That, yeah. that's oh, yeah. my issue with it. Like oh, one ad be should not be two, three, four minutes. Like here's the cigar cutter we're using from this place for this time because da 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 da, da and then just talk <laughs> about it for that long. Rough, like bro. it gets old. And, and you know what my biggest problem with the cigar authority is? Say the word fucking cigar. <laughs> I, it fucking drives me it insane. Is rough. It is rough. Dude, that's I, I, I don't notice it anymore. And I don't listen. I, I used to listen all the time because I'd listen when I was traveling and I don't travel anymore. Uh, but the thing for me is like it really is comes down to like, a, OK, well, you give us this much money. We'll give you this much time. And like as much as I was having a conversation with Mary Trevor today about the Mandalorian. And um, he was like, I feel like kind of ripped off that there's an eight season or eight episode season and they gave us a 29 minute episode yeah it's like i have no problem with that if you do it like not that it was a perfect series but the last of us was like 
all different lengths. Some of them are real short. It's like, take whatever amount of time you need to tell us what you want to tell us and have that be it. That's fine. Like, you don't have to feel like you have to arbitrarily stretch it out because you need to hit a certain number to tell the story, the piece of the story this week. Take whatever time you need, no more, no less. Yeah. And like when you're doing an ad for somebody, I think it's the same thing. Yeah. Like there's the so point many, across. stretch it out. Like fucking tell us what you want us to say. Not only that, but if it's a shorter ad, you have a lot less chance of somebody hitting that skip ahead fucking 30 right. second button to just gloss over it. They might just, they might hear it. Well, I mean, that's why reels are so popular, right? Because they're they're less than a minute long. Like re- sure. you know, it, TikTok's not like, because they're short. It's a quick minute, you know, wing, okay, I got to see how this ends. Why, why do you stay there? It's stupid. You know it's dumb, but you stay there because you're like, ah, oh, it's only a minute. Yeah. Mm. And then, you know, five and a half hours go by, but that's a different story. But then, like, but on the on the contrasting point of what you're saying, Game of Thrones is the opposite. You didn't put the time, like, you tried to end it because contracts and all the, the outside mm. stuff, but, like, you ruined the entire yes. series sure. with a single season of trying to just compress yeah. all this information right. that wasn't finalized yet. The books were, I guarantee you there's not a Game of Thrones fan out there that wouldn't have been like, you know what? I wish you would go back. Right. Take that season off and give me a real one the next year. Like right. Yep. For sure. Absolutely. You know? And and I'd take a retcon for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like, think we all would. But like, I, it, it's, like it's such a shame because yeah. it was such a great series all the way through. And well, even last, the last the season before that, you felt the you shit could, starting to yeah. change, but it hadn't turned over. It was that last season see, where they were like, ah, fuck this, let's just get it done. But my issue with that was that season before, I feel like that was just the writing. I feel well, like that was I've, still they were still not going off of books. Right. But and like, that's the problem. They're not they were not interpreting the yeah, books. They tried anymore. to get too sci fi. And it was like, bro, yeah. like this is a chaotic mess that R. R. Martin has actually managed to keep in these constraints and make palatable. And once you let go I'm of his story again, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. George R. R. Martin didn't do it. Mm. And that's why they were fucked is because he he like, didn't live up to his side of things. He still hasn't written the fucking books. Right. Because he wrote himself into a fucking corner yep. and couldn't figure how couldn't to get, get out himself of out. It. Yeah. And so like I do not blame those people for not being able to write like George R R Martin. A lot of it I blame But right. you have Martin. to have a broken mind. For yeah. sure. Yeah. But but it's like at the same time it was very obvious to me that they said, "Ah, fuck this shit. I just want out." Yeah. And like I can't blame him for feeling that way, but I feel like you could have done a little more service to the fans on the way out the door. Yeah. Um, and maybe your Star Wars fucking trilogy wouldn't have gotten fucking canceled. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> But uh, so on on a similar note though, so not the last season, but the one before, you know those actors felt like, okay, this season sucks. Yeah, oh yeah. And that's oh, why yeah. they started shopping new contracts, and that's why like because it didn't go out because the books weren't written yet. It went out because all these actors were like, hey, we're done. So like, we live at a like time. You, you had Ed Sheeran show up for an episode. We need to go. To go back to like the ads and the fucking all that shit. Like we live in a place and time where we can basically skip through whatever the fuck we yeah. want. Right. Mm-hmm. And like yeah. you can skip the intro on a TV show. You mm-hmm. don't have to watch the whole intro every time. You can just I make my button. kids watch them every time. <laughs> every fucking time. I'm like, like I, had I had to watch I had intros. You're going to watch You're them. fucking doing it. Well, here's the thing for me is like. I feel like we don't have our listeners don't do that, even though they could. Like some of them are in here live, so they yeah. don't have the option. Yeah, they're but stuck even with us. so, like you have the people that are like, I'm setting my butane to high. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just shit like that, like not the authority. And it, but but our intro for me was supposed to be when I fucking wrote it all out and like did the music and all that shit. It was selected in a way where I'm like I want people to hear this shit and like fucking get ramped up and like straight out the gate to the what's up junkies part. And I've thought about like, should we trim this down? Should we cut it out? So we, should we try to simplify it? But I feel like it gives you that build of just being like, okay guys, fucking week's over. It's fucking party time. Let's hang out. But But I think it's cause that's how it hits us. It's not, it's not too long. No, It, 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 it's, it it's good where it's at. I think it's I think it's a decent length. I think it's the right energy. I think that's what she said. Yeah. Well, that sets us apart she from the the that. cigar authority too, because they like sold out. Like they used yeah. to change. Well, they for a while they changed their shit all the time. And in the beginning, a lot of what they did was what I do on the buttons. You would have like these fucking sound bites 
from different fucking movies and shit, like mm. these references that would be peppered throughout their intro, and they changed the music a couple of times over the years and changed all of the shit a couple of times over the years, changed the ads up. And it's like, okay, you're trying to be fresh and shit, but I'm like, no, like, this is our theme, at least for the time being. Like, I reserve the right to come back later and be like, no, I think this is cool or whatever yeah. after a while. But, like, I really feel like, yeah, no, but no, I can't no, like, foresee this it happening. the tone. Like, like, it's the vibe. This is what we do. And, like, you know, it's it's like gets you there. Like, uh, if I if I just name a few Married with Children, Teenage Mutant Ninja yep. Turtles, The Simpsons, <laughs> shit Inspector like that. Gadget. You know, you know. DuckTales. There you go. All of that shit. <laughs> that we, we came from a time where we're. The jingles were a yeah, that, thing, the jingle, man. the intro to the television show, or whatever the hell it was you were watching, that was a staple part of that. You know, you were singing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, and how do you think that, that makes you then? There is not a day that goes by that my wife is not face palming because I'm walking around the house singing theme songs from a fucking show that has been on the air in 30 guys, years. Guys, think about how do you think Chris and Jeff feel? Like, there wasn't even TV yet, <laughs> <laughs> I'm and I'm getting hit for that. Oh, right Jeff has views Moses of Sam. Is- do not represent the views and authority of the cigar junkies. All right, so not so LLC. much, Chris. Uh, yeah, no, fuck, fuck, good looking Jeff. He's got everything already, including <laughs> including Chris. Uh, but uh, just remember, Chris, that that backhand goes to him, not me. Who said I'm not into that shit? Ooh. I mean, let, let, let's make it awkward. Fuck okay? around and find out. Be, no. Dude, he I was lo- into I it until he was unconscious. I love those videos. All right, so you, you, out, you, you, you know they talk about uh, if you fuck around, you find out. Well, watch that. Yep, see this guy. Here's he fucked around. He didn't find out, yeah, but yeah. this guy, oh, he <laughs> fucked around and he found all the way out. <laughs> I love those. You ever see the the? I've, I've been thinking hard about this because I, I every once in a while I'll be like, oh yeah, no. I think it was the other day. It was Yeti cup. I was watching Shannon's Yeti cup and was like, oh yeah, that shit's real shit. But this guy's whole fucking spiel is he watches a video on fucking. You know, whether it's TikTok or Facebook Reels or whatever, like one of these little like you, you know, this. I was this many di- years old when I mm. found out and like he'd be like, what? No way. Mm. And then he fucking Fuck does sake, it. Man. What? Fuck sake, sake, 40. What? And no there's way. another guy, 40 years. But like, that's his whole fucking concept. Yeah. And they're so good. Dude, no, the best one is, is it was the, the, the Nigerian the one dude. They just like. Yeah, like he's he, good. He, oh, he's something dumb yeah. and he's just like. Yeah. Very much so. Like, That's good. He, but this so guy was taught for like switch. a year. Yeah. And he's like, you know, like what was it? Like pouring a drink and the guy like built a contraption to pour it from here to here. And he's like. But the the no way guy, I feel like he's got to be American. So I'm guessing from Minnesota. No, no he's Canadian. He's, Canadian. Canadian. he's straight up Canadian. I, I know sure. the voice No there. way. Like well, that, that, that A in the back. Like, right? No way. So you're, no, but you're thinking of it wrong, right? Because he has that draw to it, too, when he says yeah. it. So he's like, no you, fuck. Your your Canadian's almost Scottish. <laughs> what are you talking about? Scottish is Here's talking the great guy. thing though. Like this guy's got fucking merch. I don't know if you've oh, seen yeah, it, but yeah. it just like is a tumbler that just says for fuck's sake for on fuck's it. Sake. For, for sake. fuck's sake. Like, how does he fucking, own for no fuck's way sake, that right? Fucking work, yeah. Oh. Uh yeah, dude, it's so good. Like I that I appreciate that guy. It's he's like out he's, there fucking doing it. He's, he's on like his toilet watching yeah. the video and yeah. then he just switches to himself and he's like, I gotta go find this shit out. For fuck's sake, no way. It's good. But I did that the other day because my wife has the Yeti. Uh, no, yeah, it's a Yeti tumbler yeah. for her coffee. And I was like, I wonder if I like I pushed the thing back and peeled it off. And sure enough, it's just held on there magnetically. Yeah. yeah. So you could clean out all the black shit underneath. You didn't know that? I didn't. Oh. But he didn't either. I found that out recently myself. It's literally on the fucking paper in the cup when you get oh, the cup. Oh, yeah. My, wife, my, my wife threw that shit away, I'm sure. I well, do. and, and oh, you're trying kick. to get coffee in this fucking thing. Get the fuck out of here. Holy you're like, get the, for fuck's arms. sake, get out of here. No, no way. He's no about way. to fucking Mickey peg us. Sake. You're going to wreck the Kraken. Dude, so you were talking about my, my Canadian. I I worked for a Canadian company when I was at Oilfield, mm. and they fucking drove me nuts because my name is not hard to say. Hoofman? In any fucking language. My, no, no. Sam. Sam. Like, yeah. Pretty much any fucking language. Like, how do you say Sam in Spanish? Sam. How do you say Sam in Irish? Sam. Like, it's not far. How do you say Sam in Japanese? Queer. Ooh, samurai. Samurai. Oh, my God. Samurai. You Japanese are very good. You say arigato like we say arigato. We say arigato. Uh, no, I, every time they'd say my name, I was thinking of Sum 41 because they'd be like, hey, Sum. Sum. 
Some. Sam. Motherfucker, I know you know how to make that sound. I you thought, go A all the time. Like, at least give me Sam. Like, I thought Sam in Spanish was puto. Oh, punto. Uh, hey, fuck are you, huh? <laughs> yeah. You want to make fuck all me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to make fuck all I do. I just rewatched. That's so the, good. So I didn't know there was a third one. Hangover. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. I watched the first two because we said something on the show. And I was like, all right, I'll put it in the background. Is it, it like have up, like only one actor from the original? Because that I, I feels like I didn't see be. the third one. Oh, okay, but I, I'm watching. The, I had the first one on, and I'm like, normally I just do stuff, you know. And I, I, I don't. I never watch TV. Mm. It's always over here, and I'm doing something. But like, I get it. No, I was like, the whole fucking movie because it's just hysteric. Like Jack Gap, or Zach Galifianakis, uh, dude. I fucking love. Got me excited. But what is his best movie? Zach, Al- um, very few people know my favorite one of his movies, know. Out Cold. I never, never seen saw it. it, dude. Go, that, go watch it. It's fuck about fuck you, a, Sam, no, bro. Fuck you. You have given me way more, and I followed through on them. Yeah, but you're not there on Pull Hall Junkies. Pull Hall Junkies for your Out Cold. So you're one, motherfucker. I'm working on Seinfeld. That's a <laughs> lot. Working that. What working? Are you working on it? Yeah. When's the last time you watched one? Like last week. And did you watch any? Or did you just have it on in the background? I don't watch them. It's a difference between a movie and a fucking TV show. Though. I know oh, you don't yeah. watch I don't them. watch you any of them. them. I hear them. I don't watch TV. I listen to TV just like I listen to podcasts and yeah, listen to other shit. Well, that's real quick. Oh, Seneca says Sum 41's coming to Star Lake. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're going to be bringing their fucking walker. should be like, hey, here we go. Oh, I got a fat lip. Oh, Dude, you said jackass. You watch jackass forever? So good. I don't know if I saw for so good. I I don't know. I've seen it's a the bunch newest of them. one. Like no, I did not see so it. I did good. not see it. So fucking good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So I I learned this the other day. So got to put it up on the projector when we fucking shut off the show. <laughs> it was a real, so somebody can fact check me and find out if it's for real or not. But the the woman who was in charge of like what to do if shit went wrong for Apollo thirteen, she. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> he just looks at me like the fuck. No, he goes, always no. oh, looking at the chat. I guess yeah. I gotta. Yeah. I'm like fucking. Um. So the woman that was in charge of like what happens if shit goes bad for Apollo 13 mm. was in labor when shit went bad. Mm. So in the hospital, getting ready to have a baby while having the baby, she's doing fucking complicated math, like rolled whiteboards in and shit, while she's giving labor. Right. Her son, Jack Black. Oh no shit! Yeah, I was like, and like, dude, dude went into like a deeper explanation. But I was like, that's fucking cool. It makes sense because Jack Black's a genius. Hey, honey, if you're listening, can you heat me up some food? I'm hungry. I'm gonna wrap this shit. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, there's nothing Chris, left on the paper. Chris, are you saying goodbye or is Jeff or are you saying goodbye for you and Jeff? I'm Turn curious. Around, bye, bye, honey. Jack Black's mother worked on a system that helped save Apollo 13. Yeah, mm-hmm. Judith Love Cohen is her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your final thoughts on the cigar that I haven't been smoking for a while? I really enjoyed it. Um, we we went a little early. Yeah, we yeah, we abs- and it was super humidified, so like I was hammering yeah, it to chewy. keep it lit. That, that's yeah, on chewy. me, by the way. If you guys have the cabinet similar to mine, the box directly above the fans is where you're going to humidify very quickly, um, which I knew, but I wasn't. I like a moist box, but not too that, moist. That was a bit. That was a bit much. They were they were squishy. I uh I really enjoyed it. A lot of because it was free. A lot of stronger cigars leave like a pennies taste in my mouth. Mm. Copper. Yeah, like a copper taste, like an, an aftertaste. And this didn't do it. I thought it was going to there for a little while, but no, it was. It, it left my mouth relatively clean afterwards. A lot You're of like the aged clean, Maduros, like actually, so Maduro means clean. mature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like a, a like Maduros that are not you know pepper bombs. You, that are actually matured and actually like aged a good bit, you're gonna find this is gonna be kind of gotcha. in, in that wheelhouse. So you want to stick to like <laughs> Maduros for a while and try and and don't be scared of it being a darker cigar. Like that doesn't, it's darker because it was aged longer, which means it has less of its characteristics. Right? It, is that kind of like how coffee works? Like a so the uh, longer you roast a coffee bean, the less uh, I was gonna say nicotine. Ca- the longer you caffeine. roast a coffee bean, the less caffeine yeah. it has. Yeah, so. yeah, you burn it out. So I guess they when they do coffee beans they do it by cracks. Mm. So like when you <laughs> roast the bean you hear it crack, 
That's Don't. the first crack. And that's kind of, that's your light roasts. And that's going to be your light to mediums. And then you have the second crack, which is going to be the second medium. crack. Yeah. Giggity, giggity, giggity. I can't not do this when you say giggity. I can't. My fucking neck just does it. Um, <laughs> but then, like, you know, and I think they go up to, like, four four cracks. Is like nobody goes beyond that because at that point it's charcoal. It's a lot of cracks. But, yeah, that's a lot of crack. It's you never all, go it, past it, four cracks. It's almost as much crack as Hunter Biden keeps. <laughs> I like the timing on that was really good, actually. That's right. I don't know if you meant. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I had my finger on the button. I was fucking leaning into it. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, was, but... I, was, I was talking to Barry Trevor about that today because we were talking about the intern. He's like, Can you give up your buttons? And I was like, I don't know how I feel. So it's actually kind of a complicated thing. Like maybe somebody sitting on the sidelines would have a better ability to do it, but it's kind of like it's, it's hard. They'd be able to hit you with them occasionally, too. Uh, yeah, and it is hard. That's what she said. So it's just, the thing about it is it's like a 50-50, right? 50% reaction time and 50% just knowing where things yeah. are going. Or like yeah, we've done this actually, enough times at this point. I'd be like, I want to push this button, so I'll lay the groundwork for it. You know what I mean? Because I can do that when I'm in control of it. It's like, oh, yeah, I kind of fucking haven't gotten to hit this one in a while. It doesn't work every time, but... 60% of the time, it works every time. I, I will say, so, of all the buttons you have, that's the only one I'm tired of. Yeah? Like, I've just... Every time you push it, I'm like, all right, fucking whatever. Just finish it. I don't know why, but like that 60% one... 60% of the time, it works but every wait. time. I'm mom fucking the shit out of you. There you go. See, you can you can build on. Feel them. better now? Yeah, dude. It's like it's like fucking you know Roblox or something. Or, uh, Roblox? Roblox. That's my kids' thing. Yeah. What, Duplo blocks. Yeah. I feel like it's simple childish shit. But dude. I think I think our no, favorite will planet. always be this one. Mighty Duck Man. I swear to God, yeah. I was there. I was like, Emilio, the, Emilio, listen for the end. That laugh at the end is so, good. It's so fucking good. I feel like all of Peter Griffin was based uh, around that sound in that one clip. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Anybody uh, got anything? Any other uh, nails to put in this coffin? What was your thoughts on the cigar? I yeah. enjoyed it. It yeah. was it was a little soft for me. It, it yeah. could, you could use a dry box, but that's not the cigar's fault. I've had it once or twice before. It's always been like a respectable, like decent stick. Um, I don't ever feel like I've uh, ever walked in and was like, yo, fucking I'm Jones in for this. But I mean, you know, it's, 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 taste change, circumstances change. Um, but it's a it's just a decent, good, like I would say average plus cigar. I don't remember what the price point is, but I know for the price point, they're fantastic. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah, they're they're single digit for sure. And they're, you know, they're it, not they're not bad single digits. it's not like measuring from the top you're never going to have hurt feelings walking away from the christoph you know what i mean like they're they're a solid measure from the bottom yeah. kind of group pretty much every one of their cigars is like that too like even the cigars of theirs that i don't care for for what they cost yeah i'm i'm, I'm for yeah, it's it. like this may not be me but it's not bad it's, yeah it's like a good, they, they don't make a it's bad easy. cigar they make shit that i'm not a fan of but like however they did have an affiliation with bill coin which definitely takes yeah, down that, a notch like at least three. Oh yeah and now Very he's much so. now he's selling tickets for 40 bucks for a cigar yeah <laughs> any other nails in that coffin mm, look at it bang bang i think i'm good bro let's uh, put a corpse in it yeah, we'll make sure you guys Fuck come and hang doggy. out with us in the Facebook group if you did not pay attention earlier. The Cigar Junkies Facebook group is the place to be to catch us live and get in on the live chat. You can also find us on all your favorite cigar, or uh, not your cigar, but your podcast platforms, YouTube, galaxyboutique.com uh, to find our t-shirts. Code word junkies, free shipping. Salud. Later. Later.